All right, I'll get the intro thing rolling, and then I'll introduce us. <laughs> Why, I believe it means angel. Why, yes, I'm sure it does. I know you're going to like that name. Won't you, Peter? Fury, now or never. Dun, 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 dun. Finally, a superhero team I can actually get behind. Mm. This Organized Chaos podcast is brought to you by Gems Art Studio. Gems Art Studio is an online store that allows access to prints that you can use for most anything, obviously as just a picture, or as a wallpaper, or as a bookmark, or anything you can think of. You can find Gems Art Studio at etsy.com slash shop slash Gems Art Studio. This podcast is also brought to you by listeners like you. Thank you. Hey, welcome to another Organized Chaos podcast. Uh, we have a really adequate show for you today. It'll be so serviceable. Uh, I'm Bob, and with me is uh, Bobby Quarters again. Uh, episode Hello 12. Howdy. This is actually your seventh yes. one, Bobby. Excited. This is seventh. Yes. Nice. Yes, you've been here for over half the podcast, so. All right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, uh, today we are covering, uh, there's some Matrix news coming out. Apparently there is a trailer at uh, some sort of a Warner Brothers conference. Uh, which is, of course, yeah. not shared on the internet because, you know, we would hate to watch that. Yeah, but, and nobody was had the decency to pull their cell phone out. Yeah, it's terrible. What the jerks? Awful. Terrible but, executives. But it seemed like a fun <laughs> opportunity to talk about our thoughts towards this new movie and also our thoughts on the previous trilogy, which, oh my God, they are numerous. <laughs> uh, we will yeah. be discussing some great <laughs> trash with Sleepaway Camp. Uh, this is something I've never actually seen, uh, so we'll definitely have some fun stuff to talk about here. Uh, we got a new What If episode. What if the world lost its mightiest heroes? Uh, it sounds like a premise as actually promising uh, what What If could be. And then I actually rewatched Doom Patrol Season 1, because we have a Season 3 coming out towards the end of next month, uh, which yes. is dark tomorrow. So uh, that will be a fun thing to talk about. Uh, so how are you doing, Bobby? <laughs> oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, had a lot of fun with uh, watching everything this week. Um, did kind of a personal uh, inventory of my wardrobe, my own personal, and clearing that out. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I see you have a, a Matrix shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I am wearing my Doom Patrol Collective uh, Ooh, Season 1. Very, very awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you want to get into this one right away? <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, we we're gonna go ahead and start out with the Matrix. I already had that. Oh, that's good. But okay. yes, uh, nice appetizer. Yeah, yeah. We we'll get to the crazy stuff later. But uh, <laughs> yeah. we got some new Matrix news. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, like you had said, it was at a Warner Brothers uh, conference or convention or something of the sort, but. They had premiered, from what I read, they had premiered a bunch of different stuff that Warner Brothers is about to be coming out with. So they showed a little bit of the new Batman movie, uh, pretty much all stuff that we've seen before. Uh, but the biggest thing was obviously The Matrix. And I love this web page I brought up. I can't scroll down, so we get a giant ad for Deadline. <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola, <laughs> betting on StarCast for his epic megalopolis. Yeah, so let's talk about that reboot of Godfather. <laughs> oh. Oh, now it scrolls down. I see. Oh. <laughs> but yes, we got to... Oh, Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's actually happening. He keeps on talking about if rebooting it's... that movie. <laughs> Yeah. I like I think when it first was announced it was Johnny Depp, which I'm shocking. I'm burnt out on Johnny when was, Depp when, still. When um, was that announced? Uh, oh god, it, it might have been like if, 
or I don't know if it was that long ago, but it might have been like five years ago or something like that. Oh, okay. So yeah, of course it would be Johnny. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, The Matrix. <laughs> so yeah, the new movie, uh, we got uh, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss returning, which tells me that's almost certainly going to take place within The Matrix. And we'll talk about the trilogy, so that'll be obvious if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Spoiling the shit out of these uh, 18-year-old movies now, which is... He's- these, disturbing <laughs> yeah these movies are old enough to uh mail in votes so yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh we also what i think i brought keanu reeves carrie amas neil patrick harris is in a new role uh, uh there was another actor that was cast <laughs> it was a new like a new addition to it um we we talked about it yeah uh, i think you brought up mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Which is a familiar it. name, but I don't know what else he's been in. So make sure to comment. <laughs> yeah, Yahya, Yahya Abdul Mateen. Oh, that's such a familiar name. Yeah, I see it right here. I do not know what I know that name from, but I know I've seen that name before. Uh, yeah. In place of Lawrence Fishburne, I da- like, it's possible. I doubt he's playing Morpheus. He'll probably be a new character. Yeah, or something to stand in for him. I doubt he's going to be playing. This yeah. is also what I had read from somebody who was there, like about that actor. So his his alleged, I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. I'll just kind of agree with this guy. <laughs> well, I do think it's interesting that this is also the first, I think this is the first project done completely by uh, Lana Wachowski. Uh, mm-hmm. She has worked almost exclusively with her sibling, we're not going to get into oh, that okay. stuff, but <laughs> okay, okay. He was in a uh, he was in the the new Baywatch movie, oh, the movie God. The Get Down. Uh, I don't know why it's he was also in again. Get Out. He was also in Get Out. Oh, maybe he I was don't. In the Aquaman, Watch Watchman, Candyman. Aquaman. Oh, was he Black Manta? Yes, I think so. Okay, I believe that was him. He was also in the Trial of the Chicago Seven, the Netflix original movie. About the uh, 1968 Democratic National Convention and the uh, protests that took place there. Yes, that is one that has been on my watch list that I haven't seen. (laughs) Oh, that is really good. I strongly recommend that one. Uh, But uh, if you're a fan of U.S. history, yeah. But I I think with Matrix Four, there's a lot to discuss. I kind of want to talk about the original Matrix movies first. Yes. Kind of cement where we stand with this franchise. Uh. I'll go ahead and lay my cards out on the table first. I okay. absolutely love the original movie. I think it's a classic. It's been uh, parodied nonstop to make it some t- in some ways h- tough to watch. But if you kind of go into it with as fresh a mind as possible, ignoring how 90s it is, it is still really good. It's really awesome. I dig the first one. I'm 100% on board with it. The sequels are loaded with I think great ideas, um, but they don't come together in any meaningful way. I felt. Uh, kind of. What's your overview of it, Bobby? I really agree with you overall, especially with the original. I mean, there's no real denying the impact that film had on culture and society alone, and even filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Like you had said, it's been parodied and copied to death at this point. It's kind of done so much that I kind of don't even recognize it when I see it anymore. Mm-hmm. But the sequels, I also felt like they had a lot to live up with. But I remember when those came out, looking at the first one, and I would kind of look back at it with a fresh set of eyes when I watched the first one, waiting in anticipation of the sequel to come out. And kind of realizing, like, you know, this movie really isn't that great, as everyone says. It's still an amazing story, science fiction, all of that. Just maybe we're overhyping it, and, you know, we're going to overhype it for us. And the sequels came out, and, uh, again, they had a lot of great stuff that they tried to fit into one movie, not all of it really fitting with the flow of the story. Yeah, and I saw that problem continue with the second or with the, with the third one. Like, I think they could have cut out all the vampire crap. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Because <laughs> it, it, it made absolutely no sense. And I did rewatch the first one because I felt it was the only one really worth rewatching. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I, I only I rewatched think... the second two because I'd seen okay. the first one a few months ago because I showed it to my daughter. It was, it's nice. like, I really like the first one's kind of great. It's kind of this mixture of two genres of like the best of two genres. And it's martial it's arts like... movies and science fiction movies. Yeah. And it, it does... is kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah. And it, it does it in kind of a thoughtful way. Kind of like, this is the world we live in and you gotta have to think outside the box kind of, you know, and it does it as a sci-fi metaphor, of course, you know? Oh well, Yeah. And I really kind of dig it. And part of the reason it's been so parodied is because it kind of was so good and it had such an impact. So now, you know, when you make a Matrix reference, it's almost uh, ubiquitous. Is that the word I'm looking for? You know what you're looking at. Yeah, you, you, you know. You, you catch it instantly. I mean, I feel like part of the reason why leather coats have become so, like, 90s day now is because they were all over the fucking place in this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a few other reasons why they became infamous from that particular well, yes. decade. But, but this movie, oh my god. I, I, this movie did contribute to that notoriety. I yes. mean, Neo, Morpheus, and Trinity all walk around in those coats. So <laughs> Long, black, leather, yes. trench coats. Because if one's cool, three are better. Three are badass. <laughs> Honestly, that purple and green suit that Morpheus had throughout most of it, that shit was awesome. Yeah, that, that is actually <laughs> that, yeah, pretty that, sweet. That, yeah, that suit's nice, I'm not gonna lie. But, you know. But, yeah, the, sequ- the sequels, yes. again, they, they fit a lot in or try to cram too much in at times. I think that with, like, the, the second one I'm a little hazy on. Like I, but the like the third one I remember there being. Well, I remember like Agent Smith survived their uh, first encounter at the end of the first one, and he kind of just had the ability to clone himself. And I remember the giant like million Smith fight versus Neo. <laughs> but I I think there was like some accident where they call they got called to another ship I think. And there was, like, some accident, and only two people came out of it. One of them being this guy, this uh, guy that they had unplugged that Smith had possessed somehow. Or he was acting like a computer virus, I think. Like I said, I'm a little hazy on it. I kind of remember. (laughs) Yeah, well, there's a reason for that. Uh, I forgot to get this properly set up, but I got the fight in slow-mo. It goes on for a while. Uh, yeah, but the so second good. movie and the third movie, there's a lot to say about that. I actually have less to say about the first one because it's it's just kind of good and it's a hundred percent worth watching if you're one of like three people who haven't seen the the Matrix yet. It's worth watching. And if you just also learn to walk, you should see the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the Matrix. Like if if you're getting into movies, Matrix is a hundred percent worth your time. Oh yes. That being said, the second one and the third one, it's interesting. And in case you're wondering if I have this fight on loop, no. This fight goes on for fucking ever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the second one, it, it kind of blo- boggles me how much it feels like a video game fetch quest. Um, it, yeah. and it picks up kind of after the first one where you have Neo and he's, he's doing all this cool stuff and he's capable of fighting the agents. We have the return of Agent Smith. We're introduced to this idea of like, corrupted programs within the Matrix that can kind of cheat it, which is what Agent Smith has become. Yeah. This is all interesting ideas that they don't really do anything with other than have, like, cool imagery occasionally. Like, there's actually kind of, like, midway to lay in the movie, we get introduced to the twins, and there are these two, like, ghost-like, almost Rasta figures that can turn <laughs> intangible and, like, go through stuff. Yeah, weren't they two Swedish brothers? I, d- I didn't look it up. It's no. 100% possible. But, yeah. But it's, they look so cool, and they actually look kind of, like, when they're in combat, actually look kind of scary. And then yeah. they're caught in a car explosion and die. And 
I didn't put a clip of it together, but there's a... You see how, like, Morpheus blows up the car they're in, and they see it coming, and rather than turn intangible, they just try to get out and get blown up. <laughs> Congratulations on coming up with a cool idea for a villain, and then just fucking killing him off without thinking about it. And also, when they would <laughs> teleport, I remember, like, their hair would pop up. Yeah. And all... Yeah, yeah, and, and they, like they we, looked we, like ghosts. Yeah, like there's this scene where you see him like rise up through a floor that looks fucking crazy. Yeah, and it's like wow, this is. And I actually even remember the trailers for the movie implying that these were upgraded agents somehow, which of course they're not. But it's no. like wow, these guys are awesome, and they don't do anything with them. It's like they're they're an obstacle for like two minutes to Morpheus. Okay. And this fight is still going on. Yeah, no, this is this is gonna go on for our, the rest of our discussion, by the way. This yeah. is I think I did this at seventy five percent time, so it's a little bit slowed down. That being said, oh, I think yeah. it's good to demonstrate like if you look at the choreography for this fight, it's kind of amazing. And I also it, it love really is. I love the duplicates of uh Agent Smith and how they do that. But yeah. we we haven't gone to the point yet, and we will. Where he grabs a pole, and that's where the fight turns to shit. <laughs> and it goes on for quite a while after that. Yeah. Like, all of this is still amazing. And I imagine that, like, how they would have captured this is probably... Well, let's just say that Hugo had a long day. <laughs> yeah, day. yeah. Well, I imagine lots well, of... Well, he and Keanu had a long days that day. <laughs> yeah, and lots and lots of copy and pasting of Hugo's face in a computer. <laughs> or probably a lot of stunt doubles oh, and wearing sure, full-body yeah. green man suits. <laughs> I don't know if it's... It looks too good for full-body green man suit. I'm thinking it's a uh, face green well, man maybe, suit. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, maybe like the, like the actual suit and just a mask. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's possible, too. And then seeing how many guys you can kind of get to look like. Oh, oh, here oh we yeah, go. here we go. This is where the fight's going to turn to See, shit. When I saw this, I thought, oh, cool. He's got that cement in. Yeah, he's going to fuck some shit up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. It's going to break off that one. Well, what's, yeah. what's going to happen well, here is, in a moment? I mean, this is still this is still awesome. Yes. I mean, but, he's counting fucking Reeves. <laughs> but in a moment, he's going to turn into a computer character. He Here is. we go. Here oh, we go. Video game Neo. Oh my god. And almost the entire rest of the fight is now just computer video game characters. Yeah. This and it looks loses like, all coolness. <laughs> I believe this was a deleted scene from the uh, Animatrix uh, or the video game. The one where you play as uh, Niobe and the other I forget. That game that was on the original Xbox. No. The graphics in that were way better. <laughs> Really? Because the game was shit. <laughs> I haven't played that game in, like, forever, so maybe not. But oh. it, here's the interesting idea. Like, I'm watching this movie, and as a general rule, when you're critiquing a movie, you don't want to rewrite it because you're supposed to judge a movie you have, not the movie that you are uh, want it to be. But this movie is yeah. almost impossible to do that with. Because I'm watching it, and I'm like... Okay, this is an interesting idea. So we have all these corrupted programs, and the Matrix is going to have issues with all these corrupted programs. No, actually, it's just going to treat it like they're always there. Okay, well, what's creating all these corrupted programs? No, they're just there. Uh -oh. And it, it kind of drives me nuts, because it's like, okay, what you could do is say, Neo, because Neo became the one, now, because he's out there rewriting agent code and stuff like that, deleting them, He's creating corrupted programs like Agent Smith, and this is creating an issue for the Matrix. And you could even take it a bit further and say, when he meets the architect, the architect says, yeah, this is actually something we've gone through thousands of times with different ones. Usually, you know, when it reaches a certain point of corruption, we reset, we, we reset the whole thing and kill all the humans that are free. And then we just start the whole thing over. Kind, it kind of gets similar to that in the end of the movie, but it's not quite there. There are ideas in this movie, and it drives me nuts how it doesn't reach them at all. And we're, we're still on computer graphics stuff watching this. Uh, if you're listening, check out the video, because so much computer graphics in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm infuriated by these movies. And I also think, at the same time, 
I am a hundred percent. I I'm gonna go ahead and segue into the fourth one. Do you have anything you want to say about these sequels? Ah, uh, well, yeah, like a lot of great things, and I remember. I remember one once I tried to binge all of them, like back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And midway, or actually right after, right after starting the third one, still just feeling like, okay, what? Let me just remember what all the fuck is going on right now. Okay, I got this. Neo's still unconscious, and he's going to be in the Matrix for a while, or something. There's this Smith-like guy that's probably a threat outside of the matrix as well and you still got the and you still got the machines out there too as well as all the threats within just i felt that again well like i said they just were trying to put too many eggs in one basket with each movie yeah and i think by the third one they realized we're piling over our cups runneth over like we got to find a way to wrap all of this up and make it all wrap quickly yeah because I did feel like a lot of it just got resolved really quickly, and it's kind of, all right. So it was an EMP that really just saved y'all's asses. Well, that's something that also kind of bugs yeah. me. Because the machines are attacking, and they're, from a distance, they're shooting at it. In my mind, I'm kind of thinking, why don't they have, like, I understand supplies might be limited, but why don't they have, like, some EMP missiles where they shoot a missile and it does, like, a short-range EMP at them? Why yeah. aren't they using those more? I understand maybe you have a limited amount, but you should be using them more. Instead, and they're waiting... Maybe, oh. Oh, and I was going to say, and maybe using what resources they do have to create more of them. Yeah. Wouldn't you want as many bombs as possible that damage yeah. machines, but not you? you yes. That would be the biggest weapon in your arsenal, man. Instead, yeah. they're using regular bombs all over the place. Uh, they apparently don't have any EMPs in Zion because uh, they wait for a ship to show up. Then the ship shows up, activates an EMP, and it's like, you need a ship for that? What the fuck? <laughs> Another thing that I've... I, I, now, you got you, with your recap of two, you kind of made me re remember something. Um, something that I felt was Im always implied with two, but they never really got into with it at all, was like a class uh, sort of structure, a class warfare sort of thing. With that guy who was uh, dating uh, Morpheus's ex, uh, Trent, or, uh, Jada Pinkett's character. Oh, yeah. How he was on a high council, and you're just like a ship runner. Yeah, I felt yeah. like that was something that was kind of some subtext to it, but not really addressed. Well, that's a thing. It's worth yeah. noting. The Zion stuff in these movies is easily the weakest stuff and yeah i'll give you a part of why it would be weaker because you you obviously the whole matrix premise is set up on the idea we're in a computer program let's do crazy stuff in the computer program and when you go outside of that it makes sense to me that you won't have as many ideas that being said you need to do something yeah you know Something like I feel like they watched Aliens and they really liked the the suit that Ripley wore at the end. So they're like, okay, let's put guns on that, make like a hundred of them, and have them and fight were... other robots. <laughs> oh, that lifter was fucking awesome. The lifter is great, but and I mean, I I I can't think of the line "Get away from her, you bitch!" without that giant yeah. lifter. But <laughs> I feel like they don't have any other ideas for Zion. Hey, let's have a big party scene where Neo and Trinity fuck, and that's about it. We aren't really going to explore anything else besides oh, oh, that. Oh, there's a drum circle. There's a drum circle. Oh, yes, that's, that's very important. And apparently glow sticks, I think. <laughs> yeah, these, these are movies chock full of ideas, and they aren't there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, are you ready for oh, the... no, do you want to do you want to talk about the Animatrix at all? Oh, it's been a long time since I've seen that. I actually remember liking some of that a yeah, fair about, bit. About the same. I remember bits and pieces of it. There was a computer animated one. I think they might have shown it before a movie. I remember I don't remember what movie to, was. I want to say the second one. No, no, it was before even the Matrix movies. It was probably some Warner Brothers movie. 
Oh. It might have been like Dreamcatcher or something like that. But I remember my big drive to see that ah. movie was just to see the animated Matrix short beforehand. And it was, uh, I believe it was by the same team that did that first Final Fantasy movie. But, but Dreamcatcher is such a great Stephen King adaptation. Oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jason Lee dies on the shitter. Um, SSDD. So good. <laughs> uh, moving on from another, Dreamcatcher. Another day. The, the, another the, day. The computer anime Matrix short that leads into, I'm pretty sure it's reloaded, 99% sure. That's actually really good. I don't know if it's online. It probably is online somewhere. I know I watch these movies on HBO Max, so okay, it might be on there. That thing is really good. I just watched my old DVD copy. Ooh. <laughs> I won with the cardboard opening. Oh, I hate those. Yeah, I, I, so... I always hate getting those on DVD, too. Just like, oh, yeah. these cardboard ones suck. <laughs> just look so sh- just bad. Yes. They look cheap. <laughs> It's just so cheap, yeah. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, the Matrix. <laughs> are you ready? Well, you want to talk a little speculation on number on four? That's what I was about ready to talk about. Number four. Okay. We got because I have I have a theory. Ooh, you have a theory. Uh, well, let's hear I, your theory because I, I have a theory, uh, and it, it's an older one. <laughs> I oh. feel that this will be a uh, kind of a reboot rehash, hmm. like slash retcon. God, I hope not. Um, well, I, potentially I a retcon that, might be okay. Mm. I've, I have a feeling it might just do like an opening. Like, it was all a dream. Mm. And eventually, well, well, here's the thing, but Neo will have these memories. So. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, still he's back as Thomas Anderson. He's doing that. He'll pass Trinity on the street. They'll kind of look at each other like... <laughs> You know, they'll start talking and realize they have some shared dreams, and that's when they'll probably be approached by Yaya Abdul Mateen's character, and he'll be, present them with the pills. I yeah, that's it. It's also I'm one not gonna lie. Like, if they take that route, I want them to handle that beginning exactly like a rom com. <laughs> You mean kind of like how a movie can start off as one thing and then just kind of change? Oh yeah, absolutely. It can't. They yeah. can't play the whole thing as rom com, but if they go that route. Yeah. I want them to play that beginning, all chipper music and shit as a rom com. The yeah. only difference being being the green hue, which actually I saw a video a while ago talking about how that green hue was kind of added in the DVD, which is not something I ever realized. I think I only. I think I when I first watched it was on DVD. So what the Matrix? Yes. Uh, first time I watched it was on VHS. Okay. I... I think I still have... I think my copy is still at my parents. I I don't think think I ever owned it on VHS. I definitely had the DVD, though. Because that was one of those... Back in the day when DVD was coming out, that was one of those, you gotta get this one with your DVD player. (laughs) Yeah, and you also want to get it with this surround sound system. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> with these tiny little speakers that do Dolby 5.1. Yeah, I my 5.1 system doesn't work anymore. It's a little sad. <laughs> my first one was great, watching uh, Night- the Nightmare on Elm Street series on, having speakers all over my bedroom. <laughs> no. But Okay, uh, yes, we were talking about the fourth one, yes, and you were talking about being a reboot. So that's that's but I also have a feeling that it might do what the kind of trend is becoming now. The direct sequel from the original. Hmm. I wonder, because you could potentially do something like that. Except... And if they do it that way, it could work. But yeah. if they do it following three, uh... no, I was actually thinking uh... they could do both. Because you would put hmm. them, uh, spoiler, 18-year-old spoiler, Neo and Trinity are dead, and they're the only two confirmed returning uh, actors for this fourth one. So could it be like, you know, the, the literal Matrix 2.0? No, I'm thinking they could be base it almost exclusively in the Matrix. Um, 
which is an interesting idea. Um, that is definitely where they have the most ideas. Okay. With that, though, but since while Neo was still powerful enough to go within the Matrix while he was unconscious, who's to say that he wouldn't have the power if he is the one to control himself as well as creating a surrounding of his own Matrix, like create his own? So Ooh. he's living in a world with Trinity. Maybe he set up, yeah, his own matrix within the matrix. So it's like their own kind of eternity. Ooh. Yeah, and that could, yeah. you could take that in the reboot thing where, like, he's done it, but then he doesn't even remember that he's done it, and he just set up this world for himself in Trinity. Yeah, and maybe it's one where they encounter each other every day or something, or I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that actually huh. has potential there. Yeah. We're living our past. We put it to you, Hollywood. Yeah, th <laughs> there is potential here. Um, there I, is. I want to say, but while... There's also, on the other hand... <laughs> there's pitfalls, too, yes. Here's yes. The, <laughs> I want to say this about the Wachowskis. I am pretty much 100% on board with whatever they want to do. What yeah. they do is not always good. Look at Jupiter Ascending. Um, I will defend Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas is actually pretty good if you repeat watch it, which is a huge task because that's like a three-hour movie, but it's pretty yeah, fucking good. <laughs> um, there's also some racial issues with that, but it, if you look past it, it's actually pretty good, but it's a commitment movie too. I'll give it that. Um, that being said, even something like Jupiter Ascending, which is just off the wall insane and really fucking bad, I, I'm i still kind of interested in anything they do, and if I have any say, Hollywood will give these two all the money they need to make any movie they want, because I want to oh, yeah. see it. <laughs> they Hollywood will hand over, like, dump trucks of money to the Wachowskis. Like, and yeah. They've actually had quite a few bombs, so I'm kind of surprised they're still able to get uh, budgets for their movies. That being said, I am happy they, made, they are. <laughs> they made The Matrix. Yes. That's like, that's like, you know, that's like Godfather status, you know? It's like, fuck off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do what I want. There, it is extreme bragging rights, if nothing else. That's like, that puts them on, like, in my opinion, that puts them on the Coppola tier. Or, yeah. even yeah. or even the Kubrick tier. Yeah, well, I mean, they made something that has definitely had an influence in film. As as much as of either one of their films, as much of either Kubrick Almost or Coppola's yes. films. Yeah. Yes. Um, definitely Scorsese and Spielberg. Yeah. And while and, their track record may not be as strong as a lot of the people you just named. Yeah. I'm always in, like, even Speed Racer. It's been a long time since I set off Speed Racer. I don't recall liking it. It was colorful and fucking creative. I'll give them that one. Oh, I, I remember the the colorfulness is what turned yeah. it off for me. Yeah, it was intense. But That's at the what same turned time, it off for me. It was. It wasn't like it was too much or anything like that. It was just kind of. This is really taking like my focus away from the film. Like this is just. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I remember it being a swing and a miss, but I am all for letting filmmakers take swings. <laughs> but I also remember it being better than Herbie Fully Loaded. Well, fuck yeah. That's, well, that movie's not even a swing. That's just a corporate well, well, the, well, franchise. Or wasn't the only thing Fully Loaded in that movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but it, I assume that's the Lindsay Lohan one, right? Yes, it was. I mean, it could be a Bruce Campbell because he's in that you. one too. I got you. Hang on, <laughs> it could be a Bruce Campbell joke too. How have I, I mean, not I'm... seen it? Bruce Campbell. I need to watch everything with Bruce Campbell. It's sacrifice. Yes, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the only reason why I've I've seen Herbie fully loaded. <laughs> admittedly. Uh, any final thoughts on the Matrix? <laughs> I'm waiting for a teaser. <laughs> yes, I am. We will definitely have something to talk about when that comes out. Because if 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 I'm anywhere near relative right, uh, <laughs> I will be terrified and intrigued to see where it goes. I agree. I, mean, I think there is potential of what you brought up. I think. No, I mean, there's also it could be 
that way. Yeah. Like it could like they could still depict stuff similar, but how they tell the narrative, that's really yes. we won't be able to see that until we see the movie. Yeah, well what you brought up is something where I I could see that really working well. I can also see that going completely fucking off the rails. <laughs> I mean, I, what I did describe is like kind of a slash theory and also like a alleged report of what the, somebody saw was relayed, sort of telephoned. And I kind of go, all right, if it's the, the two of them passing and that's as much as I read and I stopped. Mm -hmm. And I kind of decided I should go from there. So I can't decide. I think the dream is too weak, but I think I want to go with Neo creating his own sub eternity matrix. Could be. That's cool. what I want to. <sighs> I hope it's not. I hope they don't go a fucking dream route. No, oh. they can't go all in. No, no. Oh. Or if, like everyone's, or if he just decides to willingly start taking the blue pill. <laughs> oh, oh, look, uh, Patrick Duffy's been added to the cast list. <laughs> He'll be in the shower at the end. <laughs> it is a fucking dream. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. You take your step by step, have an ass the fuck out of here. God damn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are we that's ready? That's a dated joke. Oh. That is, yeah, that's a dated joke. Are we ready for an our cultural oh, touchstone here? Oh, <laughs> yes, I am ready for some great trash. Are you? Ooh, I think, uh, I think we're ready for some great trash. So, mm. you have not seen this, correct? Not until last you night. Hadn't... No, none. <laughs> okay, um, uh, off of just first impression without before seeing it like reading a synopsis or a description on the cover yeah i went into it as cold as possible this was an experience mm -hmm. i wrote down a couple of first thought notes i didn't get very far into the movie but uh i did think it'd be fun to kind of read these out okay um first of all the opening credits we have bright camp scenery and this really dark music, but they haven't really given us anything. So I'm like, did the bright camp scenery mix with the intense? Just that I dig the bright camp scenery mixed with the intense horror music. It's like, like the yeah, and we're just seeing <laughs> we're just seeing shots of fucking cabins and shit, and um, a little bit of like disembodied chanting voices of kids at summer camp. Yes, uh, we, we I immediately noticed the A plus acting in this movie. The acting is just. Oh, well, they're they're, they're oh. kid actors. They were kids, children. Well, not far into it, we get that mom. Oh, oh, oh the God. mother. Yes, we'll 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 get to Martha. <laughs> um, we we get the pedophile with the baldies. That's oh, terrifying. You mean, you, Thank you for giving you me that chickens? image. Thank you. <laughs> you mean, oh, you mean that fresh chicken? Yeah. Ugh. Uh, yeah. Uh. Early on, my impression was this is somehow a cheaper Friday the 13th. <laughs> yes, yes, it uh, did in fact start as kind of one of those, and this did come out in the heyday of the 80s teen slasher. Um, pretty much a lot of this was done on a whim and on a cheap budget, obviously. Yes, With yes. a lot of community actors and legit people, like all the paramedics that you see are were legit EMS workers. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know. So that's kind of a fun little fact about it. There's almost... Uh, I, I'm almost off my notes real fast. Uh, there's a man... There's almost a man-sized pot of boiling water. I wonder what will happen. I <laughs> <laughs> what could happen yeah, and then the uh, final note uh obviously this changes after i made this note but i made this note kind of date the guy in charge of the camp everything's an accident <laughs> Just, yeah obviously your opinion of him changed yeah yeah it changes like almost as soon as that one but it's like after a couple kills he's like it was just an accident. <laughs> Not a word of this. Yes. <laughs> hey, how does 15 extra bucks for the rest of you and yeah. 50 for you? Yes. How does that sound? Yes. All right. <laughs> I mean, not going to lie. As a cook, it'd be like, all right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, uh, yeah, okay, so he died. Not crying. Not crying. <laughs> cool. We still have a service, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, his job's open, right? Oh, you're giving yeah. it to him? 
Mm, well, I get what it is. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, I, I, all right. So this movie opens up on a lake in a camp scene, like you had mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, the score is all over the place with some disembodied dialogue to it. We go to a lake with some small kids, a boy and a girl on a boat. Where these these kids are introduced to us as Peter and Angela. They're on a boat, and you see them with, sit there with their father. You also see some older teens uh, water skiing with one girl who is not having a good day. Mm-hmm. She is not enjoying herself yeah. water skiing at all. And th- th- this kid is probably one of the better actors in this whole movie. <laughs> God, yes. <laughs> and you see some uh, two teens in there, a girl trying to, like, come on, let me try it. Oh, I can't. So he ends up, okay, I'll let you just be careful. She super speeds the boat. The kids flip the boat with their dad. He calls them, like, what is it, like, you little scamps? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, The teens crash into that boat and the two little kids, killing one of the small kids and the father. Yes. And you see one guy have a horrified look, a a girl freaking out who was water skiing, still Mm -hmm. not having a good day. Well, yeah, it's it's so crazy because I was watching it. It's like the, the capsized boat is actually not that far away from the shore when you're watching the movie. So even yeah. if she doesn't hit the boat, she's going to hit land. What the fuck is she doing? And, and the... that guy standing on the land. Yeah, she is like, go like, they're maybe only 20 feet out. What are you doing? Maybe. And what's even weirder about that is if you remember when the boat was uh, upright before it flipped, <laughs> That had a giant pole on it that had this that had a sail attached. Yes. The boat would not be completely upside down in, in water that shallow. Yeah, I forgot about that. I didn't even look at that closely. But hey, you know, I we're... haven't thoroughly researched this one. This is what I get. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just that's something that's always bothered me with it. <laughs> oh, there's so anyways. Much going on. <laughs> yeah. Any, anyways, we find out that one of the kids had died along with their father. The the surviving child. The daughter, mm-hmm. Angela. Yeah, yeah. She, wink, uh, wink. Uh, you yeah, see, I, wink. I'm, I'm, I'm winking. Do you see the wink? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy you got that. Uh, she went to go live with her aunt and her and her, her aunt Martha, who actually I just found out what was named Martha. They had said it earlier in the film. I just missed it when I was making my notes. Mm-hmm. And her cousin Ricky. Ricky is. Uh, he cares a lot about his his cousin. I think you know. He wants to protect her, knows that she had a rough go of it, and, you know, looks after her. Oh, and his mom is batshit crazy. Oh, God, the mom is just... Like, that. there are some choices that actors take when, yeah. when being cast in a role. I don't know what she did, but... Wow! I, I meant to like, put together a clip for this show, but you can see it in the opening. She is mental and... Just all types of bad. Oh. I sent you some pics of... I, I, I sent a few pics over. Oh, I, I did see an email or uh, email notification. <laughs> Let's see if I can bring something over. Uh, that mouse doesn't work. I, I should have mentioned that earlier. <laughs> but yes, this mom... Um, just wow. I mean... Wow. Mm-hmm. I really think, like... She she kind of makes Shatner look world class. Oh God, yeah. There's no comparison in the sense of acting choices. I mean, you know, Shatner will do like the pauses for dramatic effect. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think like she was maybe having a conversation with herself and two other people that we weren't aware of. Yeah. But all carrying it herself. <laughs> It's possible. Yeah, she, uh, mm. she, uh, she remarks about how she is a physician. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I can get particularly high res. I just Hey, Camp them. Arawak. But yeah, she, <laughs> I'm not, it, it actually comes into play, not in this situation, but I was actually watching this character and wondering if it was actually a man. <laughs> 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 not not yet. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> the, okay, this is also a movie made in 1983 that has been low-key parodied a lot. Mm-hmm. 
just, you know, not necessarily that well known. There's a dramatic film that has a very similar um, surprise in it. Yeah. It's just a little bit more well known, and it was a classy pick. It was made by Miramax. They yeah. make the piano and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Or made, since Miramax no longer exists. <laughs> But she also informs them, and I think this is thrown in as like a way for people to pay attention, but it does totally sound like a throwaway line, which is, oh, they wouldn't ask anything. I'm a doctor after all. Yes. Why, as a matter of fact, I am. Yes. (laughs) That's not an exaggeration. That is pretty much how that woman reads lines. No, it's, I mean, you could (laughs) probably YouTube it. Just go on YouTube, look up probably Ant from Sleepaway Camp. Oh my yeah, god, it is, it's pretty cringe, honestly. It's, she is bad. She is... Yeah. What's funny is, I've seen this before, but I would still I still made this note because I tried to think about... It's hard when you write a review for a movie you've seen a million times mm-hmm. and are a fan of. So it's like I had to watch it with fresh eyes. So uh, what I did was, I just did, I just kind of watched it with fresh eyes, and I kind of did text back and forth with a buddy of mine who introduced me to this and i asked him hey do you remember some of my first thoughts from this Mm -hmm. though it was like eight years ago when you first showed me this movie (laughs) but he was just he said i do remember one right after the scene with the mother you said i hope she's gone forever yeah no shit and i wrote and i wrote that down because it made me laugh sadly she is not gone forever fortunately it's not she doesn't chew up as much scenery yeah i mean with all the kids in this movie it takes a special type of lack of talent to be the worst actor here and i think she captures it quite easily honestly okay so when they arrive at camp they're uh, greeted by the uh person who is running camp a uh mel he runs it, and he also looks like he runs a bookie's office out the back of the camp. We also have a uh, muscle repetition Ronnie <laughs> standing there directing all the kids in. We also see a line of cooks, uh, one in particular standing up front looking like he is just enjoying the scenery and the show. He is a pedophile. No way to sugarcoat that other than, yeah, he refers to them as uh, fresh chicken and baldies. Oh. This, this is not our pedophile. This is our camp counselor. We will get to the pedophile because I do have a video clip yes. of him later. I know. Yes, this is. Yes, that's Mel. Mel, uh, yeah, he does look like and he's always has he always has that fucking cigar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> largely. He is a baffling character. I will say that. Uh he is a monologuing character at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this guy, yeah, he, he it's like your own, I, I forgot his name at, at, at first while I was watching it, because I was thinking, I've seen this enough, that's Lou. Yeah. Nope, his name is Mel. Oh, uh, how dare you get it wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I wasn't too far off. No, no. Three letters, shortened name, it's fine. <laughs> Short name, one I would associate with a bookie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lou and Mel. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, Ronnie. I don't think I, 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 I have a... I sent you one of Ronnie. I think I might have. No. Ronnie is this... Uh, he, he just looks like your typical juice head. Super Italian and super buffed out. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I know. He's got some, like, uh, very dangerously dangling short shorts on. And usually sleeveless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a couple outfits that some of the guys wore here where I was like, okay, that's what we're going with for today? Early 80s. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we had crop top jean later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think I sent you that one. <laughs> oh, God. But also, fun fact, though, the older cook that was with them, did his voice sound familiar at all to you? The guy who said, oh, Artie, they're too young to even know what you're talking about. Uh, that guy? Yeah, I'll bring up a picture of who I think you are talking about, who I'm like 90% sure He's where you're talking about. Only, he should be the only pick with a full name. Are you talking about this guy? Uh, let me move my window. Yep. Okay. That mm. is Robert Earl Jones. Okay. Or Ben as the character's name. 
He is father to James Earl Jones. Oh my God, he's his father. Holy shit. Yep. Mm. Yeah. I he mean, could and not you... be young when this came out. He can... <laughs> no. Which, yeah, this was 1983, I want to say. 83 is the year. Yes. Yes, 83. But yeah, that's just a kind of a fun little side fact. I think he just was kind of lived in the area and was like, "Oh yeah, I saw the call. I'll just, I'll just do it." Mm. What the heck? <laughs> but yeah, Artie is a pedo, and oh. yeah, he does look a lot like James Earl Jones. If you bring him up on IMDb, his profile picture that looks like James oh, Earl Jones. Mm. Yeah, yes, he does. <laughs> Long live. He died in 2006 at the age of 96. Wow. So that would mean when he did this movie, he was 73, if my math is correct. Wow. 73, jeez. Wow. He does not look young, so... No. <laughs> but that being said, damn. Yeah. Of course, how old is James Earl Jones now? <laughs> you got me down a rabbit hole. You in... The rabbit hole. <coughs> He is 21 years younger. <laughs> wow. Okay. It makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, all right. Where are we? That, we were talking about James Earl Jones, obviously. No. <laughs> yes, obviously, yes. Okay. Then we, we are then introduced to Ricky's friend, uh, Paul. And he also tells Ricky... Paul tells Ricky about Judy's boobs. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember that. Yes. Uh, later, we're in the girls' bunk. Uh, we're, we're introduced to jo Judy outside, and she is just... Yeah. She is just a bitch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's such a bitch, but it's kind of great. Mm. <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll later get to... I'll get to it. It's a fun. It's a fun thing about her. If you were to see this actress at conventions, she has a special item that she carries and autographs. Really? Mm. Yeah, and it's just what you think it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, she has a great sense of humor about it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, in the girls' bunk, you know, we're introduced <laughs> to their counselor Meg, who is a terrific speller. Meg is a great speller. She is the head of that girl's cabin, and uh, her and the other counselor, Susie. Susie works the complaint department. That's about all there was for Susie. But mm -hmm. uh, yes, Meg is the head of there, and also a friend of Judy's. Um, Meg is just a also such a bitch. <laughs> yeah, this movie is kind of filled with a lot of really unlikable characters which is kind of but standard for horror movies especially of the time it is mm. and it's one of the things that all that also i feel makes horror very great because you know with that you know you get to see these terrible characters and their demise yeah yeah so mm. it's kind of you're rooting for it and it, it makes it good and meg just is definitely an example of how it just you, you can't wait for it you're just so patient yes that, <laughs> there's a lot to say about that one because that one We'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things that I were to think of it as, like, you know, her role in this as, like, an actual counselor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, there's a lot of people at this camp that would have been so fucking sued. Yeah. No, <laughs> this camp is all over the place. <laughs> so fucking sued. <laughs> all right, later in the mess hall, we find out that Angela hasn't eaten since pretty much she's got the camp. But, you know, resting heart rate Ronnie is here, and he uh, takes her to the kitchen to uh, the pedo Artie to see if Artie could find some food or something for her in the walk-in, because according to Artie, you never know what you'll find in the walk-in. Mm -hmm. And this is where Artie starts to show his true colors and gets super cringy. Uh, he asks, is there anything you like? Well, I know something you like. He starts undoing his pants. Yeah. Mm. But... During that, right before that scene, we do see Ricky come up to the girls' table, ask where she is, and, you know, they say, oh, Ronnie took her to the kitchen. Did she, what do you think? And they were just shitty to it. And, you know, Meg just being a bitch, Judy laughing, feeding into it. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky goes back there and then gets physically accosted by the cook and threatened. Yes. But then they get away. <laughs> 
And they're like, hey, what ha The other cooks are watching and they're like, hey, what happened? And the other guy is literally coming out and putting his belt back on. Mel's like, what happened? Yeah. I guess I scared him off. Yeah, I guess so. While you put your belt back on, dude. You are fuck. so fucking mm. soon. Yeah. Mm. So fucking soon. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was. Oh, at all. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's funny you mentioned that pot of water because I wrote, later we see Artie and Ben uh, prepping uh, prepping for dinner with a ridiculously large pot on the stove top of boiling water for all the corn they're peeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this pot uh, now after like the sub shop closed at the college. I went to work upstairs for like about a year after that. Oh, okay. And there are pots that are made for like mass cooking like that. Like yeah. There was a few there. Mm -hmm. There was one that probably went up to about my hip. So. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Standing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they could. Yeah, they could get that big. And I've seen them like that. And. Honestly, the first time I saw one out, I'm I just stood away from it. Like, yeah, no, yeah, you that's not terrifying. Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. Mm. What I do love, this was also just me as a cook, my nitpick with it, where he's waiting and he's like looking forward to boil. So he's like, oh, still needs a few more minutes yet. It's not ready. So obviously, it's not boiling. Yeah. He pours salt in it. Yeah, no, that confused the fuck out of me. Just like, what? That's just... No. <sighs> I had to stop because I was... I, I had missed so much. <laughs> so, all right. So, now we're treated to a kind of an homage to one of the very first slasher films. Halloween. A first-person view. We see them watch Artie That's right. mess with this thing. Because mm -hmm. he goes to check it, he, it burns, he goes to pour some salt in it, and it's not there, so he goes into a pantry to go get some more. We then see the first person view walk in, the other cook left to go get some hay. I don't know what he meant by that. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I looked it up. I, I couldn't even find anything regional for, like, state New York. New it, New it's almost right. like this isn't the most well-put-together movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it... So then we see like the first person view hide behind the table, right where the ridiculous pot of water is. See Artie go up, stand on the chair, try to shake some salt in, and then we see some hands push him. He loses his balance, so he's holding like against the shelf, trying not to fall into the water. <laughs> and you know he's like, "Oh, come on, kid, I'll I'll help you out." We see hands. Mm -hmm. Out. And we have Taser Face. Yes. Yeah. Now, in the version I have, I don't know about the one that you watched. This scene goes on for a minute. Oh yeah. No, I, I no, put this uncut. on like I'm I'm slowing it down to help with the copyright stuff. That yeah. being said, it goes on for a long for time. A it's minute. like Okay, I, I I think we got it. I think we... <laughs> <laughs> and he's still screaming even in that body bag. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the, so this seed like goes on for a minute. Um he he's horribly burned, not killed, but still he kind of got what was coming to him. I kind of wish I had a clip of Austin Powers. I'm not dead, I'm just very badly burned. I'm just... <laughs> Yeah. Like I kind of feel that he he had that coming. No, and, god, um, yeah. No, yeah, I don't he... really feel bad about it, but we are treated to some really great looking practical effects in that very long cut, though. Mm -hmm. Like, that's some really great makeup. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Ben. Which goes all over the place in this. <laughs> yeah, you see a puss up there on the cheek. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Later, Mel and Ron are talking to the doctor. Mel urges uh, the uh, doctors to move it along and get and tell Ronnie not a word to anyone and bribes the cooks for more money. Yes. With more money for silence. Next day, we go to Ricky's cabin where they're pulling a prank on a kid. Oh, yeah. Where that. pretty much they blindfold him and make him do a sit-up right into some bare butt. Yeah, I did not grab a clip of that for some reason. <laughs> I, I have, well, probably, you know, child pornography and... Yeah, yeah. no, no, that, that's kind of a thought going through my head. It's like, uh... 
<laughs> we, we, we packed the flesh last time. Let's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I never did summer camps as a kid, so I don't know if that's like a thing. Well, uh, yeah. Okay, pranks, sure, but what? Sure, yeah, but that level. Yeah, no, what? it was. The one they did latter is more like the pranks I did when I was that age. Yeah, the the pranks, at least especially that prank, doesn't feel like a prank that's from summer camp. It feels like a prank a writer would come up with, putting yeah. about two minutes thought into it at most. I mean, to have a way to open this scene. <laughs> yeah, I let's just do a prank. What prank? Fuck it. But <laughs> but after that. There, that kid, Ricky's counselor comes in, and he's a guy named Gene who is crop top everything. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a crop top shirt that cuts off to about right here. Yeah, and, and some bike and some little exercise shorts with uh, calf eye socks. Gene ain't fucking around when it comes to crop tops. Yeah. Oh, and after that, we get a baseball game. Yes, we get a full baseball game. And it's firmly established that Crop Top Kid is a jerk, so yeah. I'm well, sure the, he has the a long other, life. Yeah, the other Crop Top Kid at the other boys' cabin. There's, like, two different boys' cabins, I believe, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this movie has a something that I, I've always kind of hinted at, but w wasn't quite able to put my thumb on it, and it was... Uh, that this is kind of like a teen melodrama that segues into a serial killer movie. Yeah. Well, one one thing that definitely, because this is something, it's a lot, it's so much like Friday the 13th in a lot of ways. But it yes. does something that Friday the 13th doesn't do. And it, it's mainly focused on the kids. Whereas in Friday the 13th, yeah. it's all about the counselors. Almost exclusively with a couple of exceptions here or there. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and I kind of think that this is just a nice take on that. Yeah. It, there's there's actually a couple of clever ideas here. One of them we'll get to at the end when we get to the reveal at the end. Yes. So after the game, <laughs> there's like some sort of social at the rec hall. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone is there. We see those older group of boys who lost the game looking for girls to go skinny dipping with. We will get to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a little problematic, but we will get to that. Well, this movie has problematic stuff? Oh my god! Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they try to persuade Angeli Angela, but uh, quickly turn to mocking her. Mel shows up in his best caddy attire, while Ricky in his seven-gallon hat and Paul show up. All the boys get into a fight. Yeah, it's this is kind of like a really scene that escalated super quickly but mm -hmm. really didn't go anywhere advancing the plot <laughs> and i do want to bring up angela real quick because something that is kind of established by this point in the movie is how she is just the quiet one she really doesn't talk at all she seems yeah. exactly positioned to be a final girl she is yeah just almost to the t an example of a final girl mm. She, no, she really is. Like, you know, she had a troubling past, kind of coming to something new and for a new experience, you know, a brighten horizon. Mm -hmm. She's super shy, super quiet. Yeah, she really doesn't say a thing to anybody. Mm, she doesn't like to talk a to the boys, those, you know. Yeah, know. a lot of the girls in that cabin are super fucking bitchy to her. Yeah. Except for Susie. Susie, who was like the complaint department, she was actually very nice to her. That, like, right when they got, there's a scene where Susie sits down on the bed with her and helps her unpack and is just being very, very kind to her. Like, I kind of felt like it wasn't really emphasized enough, but it was just kind of like, oh, hey, you see that? See, there's a nice one here. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. Uh, I think th something that we did get up to in this one, let me see here. Let me make sure. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Paul comes up to Angela, kind of reintroduces himself, says, I was, I'm a good friend of Ricky's, you know. He told me about what happened. I'm really sorry. And he was just being very nice to her. Mm -hmm. Probably the first person other than Ricky to be nice to her at this camp. And I believe she did, like, that was a scene where she did speak for the first time in the film. Yeah. 
Yeah, like I think so. Yeah, that was the first because it does make a pretty spoke. big deal about it. Yeah, because they did have an over like swelling score with it. Yeah, so mm-hmm. they kind of start their own little summer camp romance. Yes, you know? and that's that's again focusing on the kids. Uh, later we go see those older boys trying to uh, convince a group of girls to go skinny dip, and there's like twelve of these guys trying to convince these six girls to go sc- like skinny dipping. Mm-hmm. One of them convinces a girl to get in a canoe with him, which he later tips. And for some reason, he decides to submerge himself back underneath it and just to talk inside of it. Yeah, he starts t- trying to talk to her while he's underneath it, even though it's very, very clear she's left like an hour ago. What the yeah, fuck you doing, bud? <laughs> yeah, we see a shadowy figure pop up mm-hmm. and stick his head underneath and he's dead. Yes. So, yeah. We see a uh, lifeguard the next morning cleaning up after that party and being mm-hmm. super mad about it. Yeah. And I believe this is still the point where Mel's going, oh my god, this is just an accident, guys. It's an accident. We're not going to focus oh, on no. this. Oh, uh, this is what he said. Better not scare the kids while yes, there's a group yes. standing behind yes. him. <laughs> <laughs> my note. Side note. Mel is so fucking sued. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, still fucking great. Sick. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, the cook, yeah, he, he'd have OSHA up his ass. Yeah, the kid, fucking sued. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking sued. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, Mel and oh, I called him rowing machine, Ronnie, this time. <laughs> They're talking to a police with a real mustache. We'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, Mel's convinced it was a freak accident. He's going to go call Kenny's parents. Uh, uh, Relay race Ronnie recalls him being a really good swimmer. I had fun writing all these different names for Ronnie. (laughs) He was really probably one of the decent camp counselors at this camp. Uh, Angela's cabin girls are, uh, they're playing volleyball. Paul sits next to her. They Mm -hmm. chat a little. Uh, Asked to go see a movie in the rec hall. Judy is a bitch. Judy? What? Yeah. Judy <laughs> calms the situation down. You know, after the movie, they're seen holding hands, and then Judy is fixated on them as they're leaving. And yeah, Judy is a bitch, and, you know, Judy is just acting real Judy ish throughout this. Later at the boys' cabin, we see them pull a, same pr- a different prank on the same kid. They fill his hand up with shaving cream and tickle his nose with the flower. Yes. However, unlike the first time, he reacts a little bit outrageous this time. Fuck yeah, <laughs> holy, that was intense. He, pull, mm. he pulls a buck knife on the kids. Yes. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, whoa, dude. Whoa, 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 I understand whoa, you're zero. pissed, but back the fuck down, man. <laughs> whoa, 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 joke, joke, yeah. joke, joke. <laughs> The counselor takes it away from him, threatens to go get, you know, um, uh, Repetition Ronnie on the scene. Yeah, it's one of the few scenes where I'm like 100% behind what the counselor is doing in this this moment. 100%. Whoa, he's disciplining the kids, and I am 100% behind that one. In fact, it's an understatement, if anything. (laughs) My opinion, you're being a little lax about this, bro. Yeah, fucker pulled a knife, man. (laughs) Pulled a fucking knife. (laughs) We need to get this kid sleeping on his own. Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, and then they do a dog pile to Paul for reasons. <laughs> because he's in, because he's in love. Uh, um... Yeah, later we see Paul sneaking up on Angela, you know, to surprise her. Uh, then Hurricane Judy shows up, and, you know, Judy is just being Judy, and she goes to get the Megalodon, and Meg is super aggressive screaming at her this time but luckily roundhouse ronnie is there to stop yeah later at the cabin judy is being confrontational because you know uh fucking megalodon got in trouble for screaming at a kid huh <laughs> and and then you know judy says that calls angela carpenter's dream and Susie uh had to slap that bitch in the mouth <laughs> All right. And where's my next? Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. mm. I don't have, I, I kind of wrote these as run on sentences. My, uh, my word, uh, de- pad started kind of de- deleting words I had already. Oh, shit. Mm. Yeah. So I kind of had to, like, okay, 
return, write my sentence, yeah. delete. Okay, so there's they're kind of run on here. Uh, right. Later we see, after that, uh, Angela asks to go see her cousin. She's walking, we see those same older boys on, on the roof of their cabin. They peg her with a water balloon. Yeah. She falls down, and then uh, Ricky lets out yeah. a barrage of cursing. He makes it. a huge deal about it. And of all the pranks in this movie, it's like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, Shit that, happens. That's, that's, that, that seems like something the kids would probably I mean, do. <laughs> hey, I get your anger. I get your anger. That yeah. ain't cool. Yeah. That ain't cool. And it ain't cool to do to a girl like that's, you know, prepubescent teen girl. That's yeah. really not fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> even for a summer camp. Even for a summer camp. It's not that cool. But, eh. You know, then Mel comes in and says, hey, you guys could have taken her eye out. <laughs> Yeah. You, you foul mouth, you calm down. Like, no, I kind of think that's more the bigger issue. Yeah, yeah. Not, not so much that they're throwing balloons. They're on the fucking roof. You are going to be fucking sued. Yes. No, this camp is in so much trouble. Just... Uh, yeah, so later we see the head who was throwing the balloons. After dinner, he runs back. He's going to take a wicked dump. Yes. And we get, uh, I did not get a clip of this, but there are some great shots of his feet. Um, as he's taking <laughs> a wicked dump, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, we see a hand come up, cut a screen door, drop a beehive in there, and apparently the kid's super allergic to beads because he becomes honeycomb. Face. Yeah, no, he just gets covered with bees. He's dead. There is no way there was that many bees in no. that No, and what body. baffles me is that we see his feet. Can he not crawl out? What is... Like, was it that literal, like... Like, he... What, was he trying to break a Keurig record? Like... He, he clearly was strong enough to break the door, because it does eventually break the door down, but it's too late. But, but a, if he's that desperate, just window. crawl out. Get on the floor of the bathroom, dude. Go <laughs> out the fucking window! Yeah, there's options here. You are not stuck in this position. You are... Oh. <laughs> Obviously, he wasn't too bright. No, no. Yeah, so you know we watch it like the it drop on him. He dies. <laughs> Mel is finished, and he, he yeah. he's, he's having a crisis at this point. <laughs> yeah, this is the point where uh, what I said about Mel no longer applies because he's like, oh fuck. Yeah, Ronnie decides to like you know maybe we should just consolidate the camp and move everybody together so we're not all spread out, you yeah. know? Mm. Which hey, smart. <laughs> No, we need to split up so they can't get us as bad. Yeah. Well, that way, you know, also, he can keep his eye on everyone at once. <laughs> Smart. You know, Mel is convinced it's the killer, and he's convinced it's Ricky. Yeah, do we and know that, why Mel suspects that? Cause, because of his foul him? mouth. Because of his... So he thinks he's the killer because of his foul mouth. Yeah, and also he thinks that whenever she's in trouble, he always gets her out of it and saves her. Okay. And he says all this, like, later at the lake where uh, Megalodon and Judy That's go to right. throw in the water. I, <laughs> and, I, I just remember thinking that is so flimsy. I didn't know if there's anything else to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we uh, are then seen... Uh, we are then s seen to that first-person view, but we see Angela waiting outside of a cabin at night kind of looking around like she's looking for somebody. We see a hand reach out and grab her, and it's Paul. Oh, fake out. Oh. Uh, and we see uh, them run off to the beach, have a little happy moment. Then she starts having a weird flashback when she was younger with her brother spying on her father and his male lover. Yes. And it was treated, yes. it was very much treated like, oh, my God. What is she, the, the the issue? Is the doors open? She so doesn't be able to see that. But and, and they were really <laughs> just spooning. Yeah, and it it was so. It, I felt like so okay. much. It was like, oh my god, two men in bed. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, but I I did think that it it kind of treated it the way it was depicted in that dream sequence, like all black background with a white light on top of the bed. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> A little bit, but also it's just kind of like, okay, they're kind of just treating it as, you know, kids not understanding that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I thought was weird was the, th the little sequence that followed that, 
with the two of them sitting on a bed and the camera spinning around yes. them, or bed spinning, probably more likely. And the, the, the Ricky was pointing the, at Angela, just saying, or no, you, no, 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 Peter, Peter. Oh, well, brother. it was Peter? Yeah. You see, I've it only was seen Peter it and Angela. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, the two little kids at the beginning, Peter yeah. and Angela. Yes. Okay. I got gotcha. you. They mm. were siblings. And yes. Ricky is their cousin. Yes. So they were like pointing at each other and the camera was just kind of going around the bed. It was, it was a really weird one because it was doing dissolves where we would see it spinning and it would stop when it would get to Ricky and then stop when it would get to Angela, but it would still be the still of them mm -hmm. going towards the other. And it was... Now, it was now weird. you've done it, you called him Ricky. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Peter. Yes. But yeah, it, it was just a really I mean, it was a cool camera dissolve trick. Like it was it looked cool, but Yeah. Weird. Mm. Weird because it's like no context. Just a weird dream. Anyways, it freaks her out and she just pushes him off and just, you know, leaves. Later we're at a game of capture the flag. Um Paul uh, apologizes for being so handsy with Angela. Uh, she's just like, I'm just not ready. I'm not ready. Judy sees this, decides to try to seduce Paul and be uh, extra Judy-ish. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Ricky is right. Judy is a scumbag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Later, no. later back at the beach, Paul apologizes to... Uh, Angela again for you know being a jerk face. Uh, Judy Judy slimes her way back over being extra cunty. Angela looks pissed. Uh, Judy is antagonizing her, and then about going in the water, Meg is here and uh, they pick her up and throw her in the water. Yes, Angela hasn't. And I want to make a note: like at this point in the movie, Angela really hasn't been willing to participate in a lot of any of the activities on camp and Susie's been very understanding. Like, you know, you had a, you had a rough go of things. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You could just sit here. That's fine. Well, they do make the point of uh, saying she doesn't shower with the rest of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. She very much keeps to herself. And uh, they do like mention a lot of that, but they're kind of like, they sprinkle that throughout dialogue mm -hmm. with it. And so much of it is just, you dismiss it. Yeah. But they do that for a reason. Mm -hmm. But we will get to that reason. Yeah. Uh, later, you know, we see a counselor's meeting. We find out that Meg has the night off, and she brings up that Mel owes her dinner. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, so Mel's banging the Megalodon. Or, yeah, uh, or is fixing are, are, are they, yeah. I'm, I'm like, really? And she is the one that, like, brings it up to him. So it's like, really? You're looking at Mel and just like, oh, yeah. Get me a I piece of that, of that one. I need me some uh, sixty-year-old man ass. Uh, fuck yeah! <laughs> Geriatricisms. Oh yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Meg is sh so she goes. So Meg goes back, has a date, goes back to shower, asks if she can cut in front of any of them. <laughs> they all look at her and go, "Bitch, please." Yeah. But I need my, my sixty-year-old man actually, ass. I need my. <laughs> my wife's words, actually. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they really did give her that look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she goes to the cabin that is just attached to theirs, obviously, low turnout this yeah, year. Yeah, I'm really, ah! I'm really am kind of confused why they don't, like, if there's such a line to the showers, why don't they just... Why don't they just it, utilize both of them? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know. I get maybe they're not supposed to, but... If they're not supposed yeah, to, why can Meg? Why can't... Well, probably because the other one, the other shower on the other side of the cabin has two dangers in it. Ooh. One, you can get stabbed through the thin shower walls, and also, lover boy. Ooh, yes. Mm. <laughs> I remember that <laughs> lover boy thing. I was like, really? Really? Lover, <laughs> lover boy like, has a cameo. Hey, <laughs> you just dated your movie. <laughs> Everybody uh, is uh, working on the... <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find... Oh. Scroll. There we are, yeah. there we are, yes. So, yes, Meg gets killed. Yes, and Mel <laughs> is very distraught over it, which I guess he will be I distraught. get. Yeah, he hasn't found her yet. But but he is noticed she's late for the date, and he's asking everybody where she's at. Mm. 
And later we see Paul and Angela talking out in front of the rec hall. They get interrupted by Judy and a boy. Gross. Mm. <laughs> Just because Judy. <laughs> nah. And Angela tells Paul to meet her at the lake after the social. Ooh. So we see uh, later during the council meeting, we find out one of the counselors, Eddie, gets to take all his little small campers. His wee little children out to camp under the stars by the lake. Mm. Oh, also, I wanted to mention those same children when uh, Meg threw uh, Meg and Drudy threw uh, Angela into the lake mm-hmm. <laughs> earlier. These little kids were kicking sand at her. Yeah, <laughs> she was leaving, and Ricky called them little fuckers. Yeah, <laughs> I'd seen this movie probably like ten times, and <laughs> I just caught the fact that he called them fuckers. Ah, the little details. <laughs> I, I was probably laughing for five minutes about yeah. that. <laughs> like, all the fuckers. Yeah. Oh, so they get to, he gets to go out and uh, camp with them. Yay for Eddie. Mm. I, I, I don't envy him. Mm. Not at all. Mm. Uh, then we get, uh, then we see, we see them get settled in and we see them go to bed. Eventually we get cut back to them. One of them wakes up. And it's like, Eddie, I, I'm cold. I can't sleep. Another one says, yeah, can we go back to camp? And he's like, all right. He takes a few of them back to the camp, their cabin. And then we see the first person view walk in on the campsite, look down and see a hatchet. Mm-hmm. Then we cut away. <laughs> so we'll find out. We'll find out about this reveal. But yeah, so they hatchet a bunch of fucking kids in this movie. Yeah. The killer kills small fucking kids. Yes, yes. It just. It's kind of like, oh, we that's need we need to boost that kill count, guys. Okay. <laughs> I really think that's just a super ballsy move. Yeah. For a horror film. Yeah. A super ballsy move. Yay. Hey. Mm. I mean, you, you could kill a dog or a cat or an or a pet, and that's just like almost par for the course with these type of films. Yeah. But kids. Ooh, that's that's some that's some like shaky ground you're on there, man. Yeah, very Anakin Skywalker y of them. Yeah, the Hill, <laughs> I mean, the Hills Have Eyes remake did it. I think. Or at least they kept teasing that, it. But, eh. At least they kept teasing it. All right. So back back to uh, Arawak. Uh, Mel is looking for Meg. He eventually finds her. And then he starts monologuing, monologuing over her perfectly propped and fallen corpse. Mm hmm. Yes. It is so. I just don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. Before that, before he goes in and finds her, uh, we see Judy in that cabin with that boy. Mel goes in That's and asks right. her. Said I, I saw her over there. The boy is hiding under the bed. After that, he leaves because he's like, oh, I don't want to get caught by Mel. Yeah. Oh. And, and she. You, yeah. I, then we later see her curling her hair. Mm. <laughs> And everything turns out well for her after that. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we see the shadow, a shadowy figure open the door, but if you have the high-definition version, you could tell it's just one of the actors wearing a wig. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. It was super quick cut, and it was just like, okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute. It looked like a dude in a wig, if it I was remember a dude correctly. In a, yeah. It was mm. Ricky in a wig, to be exact. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh... And we see the figure walk in. Judy goes, Ow, it's you. What do you want? Judy gets a knuckle sandwich. Mm-hmm. And then she gets a curling iron uh, placed. Um, they suggest it was in her crotch. So, and what, like, she, like next to it? What are you, what are you implying? What are you implying? <laughs> I, I can't tell if it was um, stuck on mm. or in or something. Mm. It was used in that general region as a means of pain, as well as probably suffocation with a pillow. And then the body discarded underneath the bed, and the bed pushed back up against the wall. But yes, if you go to a Comic-Con and the actress who plays Judy, she actually has, like, that type of curling iron. And she will sign the box. Nice. I mean... That's almost kind of like, yeah, I would pay for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh... That's funny. I don't know, I just, I, that imagery, it just, it makes me think of the line from Top Secret. We found this. And we found them with this in their, this position. It took an hour to get the smile off their face. 
<laughs> oh god, that's a great. Oh, Eddie comes back to his campers. <laughs> Eddie pukes. Eddie is also so fucking sued. Mhm. <laughs> All right, Ricky is making his way back to the mess hall. A counselor is stopping him, but he lets him go in because they both agree that dinner was shit. What? <laughs> yeah. All right. Mel. After after that, Ricky's leaving. Mel attacks Ricky, beats the shit out yeah, of this kid in the woods. Mel is still oh so fucking sued. Yes. I think Mel. I think it's fair to say Mel's given up at this point. <laughs> yeah. At this point, he's like beyond chapter eleven. Yeah. It's like I'm already fucking sued. Fuck it. Mm. He decides he needs to get the fuck out of Dodge, so he runs away through the archery range and gets an arrow through the neck and in my opinion the best practical effect in this whole movie quite possibly i have it up on here and it doesn't look bad like you can definitely tell the back is a spring-loaded piece yeah you you could see it shoot up and how it doesn't exactly line up and there is a layer on his neck of something that uh, you can clearly see because this is like a, obviously this is like a restored version of the yeah film. it's a much higher depth version than we're supposed to see because his neck is a slightly different color uh it's a little I imagine some sort of protection, oh. and it's like, I guess there's probably shooting a retractable arrow at him. I, I can't imagine they're doing something that crazy, but maybe. I don't know how it sticks there. Normally, well, I, I mean, if it's, if it's like a retractable one that's yeah. mounted on with, like, to this piece here, mm -hmm. my question is, how would they, are, like, the feathers on the end of the arrow spring-loaded to pop out as well? Well, are you talking about the back? Yeah, like, yeah. The, the, the well, easily. The back is easier because you don't actually see what's back there. You could, there could be a whole rig back there you don't see. You kind of see it's it the front that kind of confuses right me. Yeah. yeah, the front is really where I'm stuck with it because. So, yeah, it, you see, yeah. it looks like it goes in. So, mm -hmm. it looks like it could possibly just be like, I don't know, maybe a magnet? Yeah, it. It's weird. It looks like if you actually watch the movie in real time, it actually looks a little flimsy. It doesn't look particularly great. But, like, I found if I played it slow-mo or frame-by-frame, frame, I'm like, that's actually not too bad. Obviously, yeah. it'd be bloodier. The bloodlessness is kind of a giveaway. Uh, well, you but, know, give and, yeah. give and take with yeah. rating boards and everything. <laughs> it's not. The worst thing ever. I'm actually kind of amazed because some of the stuff in here is the worst thing ever. But <laughs> so, all right, yeah. Ronnie. Ronnie gets a phone call alerting him, and he gets the other counselors. You see this happen before Ricky gets accosted in the background. Mm -hmm. Ronnie gets a phone call from I think Eddie. You know, going, dude, you just, you won't believe this. So, Ronnie rallies up all the camp the camp, or the counselors that are there. And they get that same police officer to show up who was there earlier. Do you have the before and after pick? I don't have before and after. I just have. I thought I. S oh, yes. I think you did send me one. But here's yes. the after. This is the after. This cop yeah. was in here earlier after uh, that kid drowned. <laughs> and then rather than just say that he shaved his mustache, they stuck Baby. that thing on him. Yeah. Yeah. Because this was a reshoot, actually. I'm certain it was. That's usually how well, that stuff turns out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That actor had shaved. His... Yes, see, there it is. That's what he looked like earlier in the film. <laughs> this is what he looks like at this point in the film. I say, like, the, the horror and the macabre is so bad, it scared his mustache right off the face. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> like... We'll just blow this uh, up. But yeah, it's yeah, it just replaced it with some tape. It, it's like the worst looking thing ever, too. It's like, why would you do that? Just no, so, no. After a bunch of investigation, Glenn find Glenn is able to track down Ricky's body, find out he's still alive. He's just badly beaten. Glenn takes him up to uh, the the office to kind of make sure he's okay, while Ronnie and uh, Susie go looking for Angela. And Paul, they find them on the beach. Angela, their backs are faced. Angela's back is faced to them. It looks like Paul's resting on in her lap. Angela's kind of whispering a song. They're they're kind of slowly trying to walk up to him, like guys, guys, we got to get to the cabins. Come on, come on. 
And then we're treated to a flashback scene out of nowhere Mm -hmm. where it's Ricky's mother talking to the surviving child after that accident. The kid's head is all wrapped up and bandaged. So we could tell it's, it's a kid. It's one of the kids. We were assuming it's a baby Angela or a Mm -hmm. young Angela. Yes. Uh, She's talking and the mom goes on some crazy long, long dialogue of her questioning herself. And then, Oh no, no, that can't just be. That's what I always say. Yes, that's right. Oh God! And she's so cringe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then decides. Well, you know, I've always wanted a little girl, but when now that my husband left, that won't happen. Well, we can't have another boy, so we'll have to have a little girl. Is that all right with you, Peter? Mm-hmm. Then we find out that this whole time Angela has actually been Peter, living as Angela. Yes. So this is. Probably where we really are gonna full stop and talk about this. Yeah. Well, because uh, this this dives into a lot of different psychological. Well, yeah. So we find out that uh, Peter's been living as Angela, and then we are treated to what appears to be Angela or Peter. Uh, it gets really, really problematic, her- fuzzy. <laughs> yeah. Here. Who apparently chewed off the head of the boy? I'm brain farting on his name. I know you mentioned Paul. a couple. Paul, yes. Paul. She has she chewed off. off his head. I think she cut it off. Did did she? I mean, her mouth was she... covered with blood. Uh, anyways. Yeah. And then we are treated to this scene. This scene is added, but. God, she's a boy. Yeah, see, there's, there's, there's repetition, Ronnie. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And Oh boy. I mean just uh, uh, it, just judging from a filmmaking perspective, this looks really bad. <laughs> no, no. This th- this this looks like superimposed. It doesn't even look And um, it, it it it's jarring to look at it as a still. Cuz I mean, yeah. I could see I clearly see it's a mask. Yeah. It looks like some sort of Angela mask or something on a male body. Uh, yeah. It's not a frame similar to what Angela had throughout the movie, which no. you would think you'd want to shoot for. <laughs> yeah, or go with. Yeah. Um, I know that the actor who portrayed this this stand-in of Peter Angela, um, like, I know that he had to get a little liquid encouragement going. Oh, I so I know that they bought him, like, a six-pack of beer. But the scene where you see Ronnie and Susie approaching, you see him in the distance just kind of throwing off his shirt in the background, kind of, like, right by those bleachers. Like, you see it in the film. Like, he's just slightly out of, like, just beyond a dune thinking he's out of frame. Mm-hmm. But he's really not. And I mean, yeah, I imagine like you'd have to get some liquid encouragement to be bare, barren at all in front of a whole crew and some people like, yeah, <laughs> there's so many issues with this. <laughs> but this like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I read a hot take on this. All right. And it was from and I want to be as clear about this as I can. The view I'm about to recite or kind of recall as best to my knowledge was from the viewpoint of a trans person okay so i believe it i believe the trans person was male transitioning to female now here now their perspective on it was she was saying that the whole time she viewed angela as like a queen and this as a representation of trans experience so it kind of being a good po- like a a good light of it and a bad light in it at the same time because people can look at it and just think, oh, ew. Mm -hmm. But more of like from the positive side of it being that, you know, Angela comes in. Some boys are talking to her more than the others. Girls are going to get mad at Angela, Judy and Meg. A lot of the boys, some of the other boys are thinking she's weird and they just want to mess with her and be dicks those group of older guys somewhat and there are people who just genuinely are interested about in them paul Mm -hmm. kind of all very it's an interesting viewpoint from that perspective but but, i mean 
for it being like a positive way. I mean, and I could see her being I, I, Angela just, you know, kind of being like, yeah, that, that I guess that would be a good positive light for that. <laughs> yeah, it's. I it's, mean, like obviously, I said, it's, it's a it's a take. It is a take. It's not my own, but it is one that I read that I kind of thought was noteworthy of bringing up. It's impossible to properly discuss this as being yeah. cis white males. At the same yes. time, we we're talking about this movie, so we're here. <laughs> yeah, we're here. So this we is, gotta we gotta talk about it. Yes, it is. Like we both we both have no fucking place to. Yes, but here we are. <laughs> The context of the film, this is how we're discussing. The, 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 there's ways to look at this, because this wasn't Heater's choice. This was forced upon him, so you could argue that's psychological damage. Yes. Yes, yeah. It was, and, like, Peter didn't have a say in it, and he did, he, Peter did just experience some serious trauma. Yeah. So he's... Definitely, definitely misdiagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. And the damage that that could do on one's psyche is just, um, it, it, it's unknown because all those cases are different. Mm -hmm. So like the psychological trauma he probably experienced watching his father and sister die right in front of him. I couldn't even, God, mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, the non-problematic way to handle this movie is to yeah. save the beginning. Like, I don't even understand why that beginning's in the beginning with the, the kids and the boat and all that. That's, to show that us the young the Jersey Shore. Yeah, you to saw that at the, the end. To show us the Jersey Shore. And then uh, the reveal is that Angela suffered this traumatic experience. She was the only survivor, and now she's crazy. And but, Yeah. But it adds this extra layer of it's actually Peter, and... Wow. Like... I don't know if this was just a choice made for shock. Yeah. I mean, and not so much the fact of, like, what Angela or Peter actually represents, but just the shock of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, yeah. I have this edited. You get the full Monty in the, the movie. Um, yeah. Which is, it does, it looks terrible, by the way. Well, there's also a lot of, ba there's also a lot of bear male ass in this movie, too. Yeah, yes, there is. You know, usually, a lot. <laughs> usually, like, usually in these movies, you get lots of boobs, and I don't think there's any here. Mm, no. No. I, uh, guy boobs here. No, I actually. The we get. <laughs> I think maybe a partial when Meg dies. Mm -hmm. Like when she maybe falls out of the tub or the shower stall, but that might be it. I don't. I don't even think we see anything then. Yeah, I'm thinking like, or maybe when she's stabbed, but she's in the shower. So yeah, I'm just thinking possibly there. I, I think. One, it, I think like, the camera's out of view for that. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, <laughs> now this movie has brought but, up yeah. trans issues for because that's the deal. The movie treat this is kind of. I would almost hate this movie if it wasn't so almost just so just not thoughtful as to what it actually is doing. It's do because you yeah. can, you know it's doing it for shock value. At the yeah, same it time, is. it's dropping this massive bomb that this is a trans character and treating it like, oh my god, of course they're the killer. They're trans. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That is just a little oh, hell of a cringe. take there. Oh, yeah, that's that's uh, even worse than the pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> but about this though, the kills are very just. Every one of them. Well, the kids. Like art, like like art. Well, not well. The kids threw sand on her. Maybe not them. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not them. But Artie, he tried to molest her. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, Judy. Now I need just, to rewatch it. Judy, um, Judy and Megs were Judy and Meg were both real bitches, and mean, and and Meg hit her. <laughs> I don't know if I'd quite so far go far as to say they're just. They're all awful. Uh, the only they're one I would say is probably just would be the pedophile because fuck fuck that piece of shit. And, <laughs> and, and maybe Mel. <laughs> maybe Mel. Yeah, it's true. Well, yeah, Mel definitely. Uh, not because of yeah. anything he did to her, but because of what he did to uh, Ricky. Yeah. He's a real yeah. piece of shit to Ricky. I'm like, Jesus, yeah. dude. 
take it easy. Hang it in. So my closing thought on this, like sleepaway camp, the acting is campy for a lack of a better mm-hmm. word and over the top. Uh, the characters are as well, very much over the top. Um, understandable killings for once, you know, a horror is like, you know, th- this one is actually very rewatchable for, you know, cheese factor that, and kind of to engage in good thought and conversation as well. Uh, the fourth one in the series, well, th- this is brought oh my on God, several four. different oh my God. Yes, there are. There's actually one pseudo. This one actually kind of has a weird little history to it. Mm-hmm. Um, two and three were shot back to back. One right after the other, I believe, either that or co- or they were filmed side by side. Uh, both made to be direct to, you know, network. Okay. <laughs> so the violence was toned down quite a bit in the uh, third one, I believe, which has a different actor, actress, a uh, Pamela, no. Yeah, Pamela Springsteen plays Angela in that. Yes. That Get her brother is exactly who you think it is. Oh shit! No, I just assumed it was a coincidence. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, yeah, her brother is exactly who you think he okay. is. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, those ones, however, they kind of up more and go straight for the comedy and the cheap laughs, and sometimes they hit on the violence more so in the third one. The third one's called a teenage wasteland, and the second one is called uh, unhappy campers the second one is definitely the better of the two but the fourth one is apparently a return to camp arawak which has the returns of ronnie uh angela and uh ricky now are you sure the third one's not called baba (laughs) (laughs) o'reilly no no there's a young punker kid who's in there who is um like the all of the the last one, the three that has these this couple who uh, takes these at risk teens out from the inner city into nature and gets them back. Yeah, yeah. Do you uh, do you remember um, um, House of a Thousand Corpses? Oh God, it's been a while. I love the menu for that. <laughs> remember the guy in the beginning at Captain Spaulding's shack who was in there talking to him, talking about that guy they knew who had Doctor Zaya stuck up his ass. Absolutely, the not. older. I remember. Older guy. I remember Captain Spaulding. I remember. <laughs> yeah, there was an older guy that was there who was kind of an actor. Like he, who was an act, who is an actor, but he was an older cat. He's in this, and he plays like a creep who is about all about messing around with the at risk dirty girls that mm-hmm. they he and his wife pick up. His wife is just lazy and likes the government checks. <laughs> so that there, like again, so at least terrible characters have stayed a constant throughout this series. No, oh, well, I should hope. The uh, fourth one, uh, that one does feature Ricky, Ronnie, and Angela as returning cast members. But that one is, I believe that is one that is also written by the original uh, writer and director of this one, mm. of, the, of the first. The <laughs> other two were not, did, didn't have any returning me- production or anything. They just casted everybody, and yeah. yeah. Those two and three are just, they're good in the sense of like, just a bad, bad movie. Okay. Well, like, worth one watch each. I would think, I would think I'd probably hate this movie just for the whole how it treats trans issues. Right. Which I said, you know, there's already like caveats to how it treats it. But overall, I'd probably think I'd hate it. Except there's so much just inconsistencies with it and how the whole movie is almost handled is all over the place. Yeah, there is a lot of cringe factor. Oh, this. God, it goes from cringe to, oh, well, that was actually pretty good. And then cringe. And then cringe. Yeah, I mean. It's, it is fun if you can handle yeah. some cringe, <laughs> a lot of fucking cringe, some hardcore cringe at the end. Some. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is. And it is definitely something that could be problematic. Yes. The, the, but, the, I mean. The biggest saving it's... grace is that you can't possibly watch this movie and think of it as any sort of moral lesson which kind of saves it kind of no (laughs) now i mean i know that 
the actress who played Angela in the original, Felicity Rose, she still does a lot of press and like publication and like tours still promoting this film. She appears at screenings for this. Like, and it it has a huge fan base. Mm. <laughs> but it definitely is something that I think has like, you know, it is definitely some great garbage that oh, is worth God, some yeah. Mm. And those are my closing thoughts on Sleepaway Camp. I, I think I already worked my way in there. Yeah, it's, uh... Yeah, I, I guess since it was brought up upon, I'll just go ahead and quickly say, um... My deep thoughts on trans issues are essentially the libertarian ideology. Uh, do what you want to do as an adult. <laughs> I'm cool. You're, 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 you're a human being, and yeah. by the laws of this country, you are a legal adult. Yeah. Do what makes you happy. Exactly. Your your time on you're, life, you're, Earth is limited. What whatever makes you happy, as long as it doesn't I mean, hurt anybody else, go for it. You know. Regardless, I mean, my own personal creed is like, uh, regardless of theological or governing laws of man, you're allowed to be happy. Mm. You're allowed so, to be happy. Yeah, I just thought it was important to tackle that. But yeah, our, no, no, thank you for actually. Yes, it 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 was. Yeah, because we had to with this. This movie <laughs> is problematic. But, you know, obviously it's not a moral lesson. It is dumb, and it can be appreciated as a very, very dumb movie. <laughs> and a lot of it is, in fact, just a dumb movie. Mm -hmm. So, I heard there was a new episode of What If uh, last week. Ooh. Was there? I don't know. <laughs> um, I will be right back. I'm going to get some water. <clears throat> Ooh. Okay. Well, there was a new episode of What If This Week. You can lead them in. I will follow after. Ooh, okay. So, What If is actually, I thought, pretty cool this week. And it's just going to autoplay on me, so we are going to get a claim on here. That is for sure. Uh, ooh. Give me just a moment. I'll get set up. But this is Time. perhaps. I do feel like this series is finding its footing but let's get into the story because the story is essentially we are following the heroes uh our main character is probably nick fury it probably varies throughout but we are treated to the very beginning of iron man 2 where uh they're given uh, tony stark the dose of the medicine he needs if you remember that movie and tony stank tony stank oh and the dose that Black Widow gives him kills him. And this causes S.H.I.E.L.D. to arrest her for killing Tony Stark. And she's, of course, pleading her innocence. Uh, Nick Fury believes her. And then we cut pretty quickly to Thor. And Thor is going to S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters to get his hammer. Hawkeye's got his bow and arrow. He's going to shoot Thor. But he's like, you know, I'm waiting for your word. And the word isn't given, and then he accidentally releases the arrow, and he kills the door. And that was set up perfectly right there. That was. Damn it, Mark. I, I told you to stand down. And he's Again. saying... It wasn't me. Yeah, he's I saying never. it wasn't him, and he killed yeah. Thor, but it wasn't him. <laughs> and then, they, of course, they arrest <clears throat> him now, and at some point, uh, Natasha breaks out. I don't know if it's before or <laughs> well, after, but she's, but we yeah, also I find this... that uh, Clint <clears throat> is dead in his cell. Someone killed him in his cell. Yeah. So three Avengers down pretty much very quickly. <laughs> and in quick su succession with one another. But Natasha goes out investigating. She talks to Betty Ross and Bruce Banner. Uh, uh, Bruce I like Banner. Shot. Oh, yeah, that was cool with the Watcher in the background. Yeah. Uh, that was cool. And I shouldn't put together clips for this. Of course, uh, Loki comes to Earth because Thor is dead. Uh, and then I think this is after Thor goes or Hulk goes boom. Because I, I was we, when we were watching it, we we're like, well, you know, you can't really kill Hulk, and he didn't even mentioned, you know, he's unkillable. But yet, hey, I just realized it. What it said Stan Lee's like Stanley, the oh, full name. Nice. <laughs> The, the pizza place, Stan Lee's Pizza Parlor. Oh, shit. Yeah, that is That's, nice. That is a nice touch. But, yeah, <sighs> Hulk's dead. Uh, and then 
So Natasha's off investigating. She gives Nick Fury the message of, oh my god, it's hope, it's all about hope. And then she's killed. And then Nick Fury com- goes to Hope Van Dyne's grave. And he meets yep. up with Hank Pym. Who we find out has been yeah. killing the Avengers. Oh, is this the little... only one with access to S.H.I.E.L.D. and yeah. fun. Yeah, Hulk had the worst one. Man. Yeah. And what of Thor, Prince of Asgard? Goldilocks? You would have recruited him in a heartbeat. And the biggest, so... well, the biggest surprise for me was Michael Douglas. Yeah, it's Michael Douglas as the voice. There's lots of, re- there's more recasting here than I thought. It's, I want to say it might be 50-50 overall. I was actually kind yeah. of surprised they got Michael Douglas to do this role. And I, was, I was happy. So he ends, <laughs> what ends up happening is Hope Van Dyne, his daughter, joins S.H.I.E.L.D., she dies, he goes nuts from that, and then he starts, you know, tearing away at Nick's plan at the Avengers. So he targets the Avengers initiative. Thor was just kind yeah. of a bonus they walked into. And <laughs> this is actually what I was wanting them to do when they start doing What If. I feel like every episode they're pushing that boundary and they're getting closer and closer to the series I want to get. Because no, this is absolutely like I was, th- I thought that right when I was watching. I got like, Bob must be so fucking happy. Yeah, with this. this is, we're getting there. This is, yeah, this is just chaos. This is an alternate world where shit gets crazy because Loki conquers this. Yeah, he conquers the world at the end of this one. He does! Yeah. And, the, and uh, I loved it. Yes, the big twist at the end being uh, that they reveal that Nick uh, Fury, I almost said Nick Cage, Nick Fury does have the pager for Captain Marvel. He ca- calls Captain Marvel, and then he goes to Captain America's shield. And Yeah, I, he goes to Cap where he's frozen, and then we see like Captain Marvel Mm -hmm. and that one I was just like oh god damn it you're gonna end it there yeah I want to back Captain I want to see how that goes on I know well that's so where's the fight I almost want uh almost all these episodes I will say part of my issue is they end and I kind of want the sequel (laughs) yeah I kind of want a sequel to this one I'm not gonna lie I I think that Carol I think Carol Danvers and Steve Rogers would Mm-hmm. they'd work very well with each other i think the issue would be i don't know what i guess steve could do crowd control because we already know he wouldn't really help much with the fight directly against loki that being said captain marvel would kick the crap out of loki <laughs> shit out of him it'd be no question no i mean we, we we would just look at him loki versus the hulk and just go meh yeah <laughs> so this is this is what they need to do. Uh, they, yeah. Is this, like, the perfect example? I'd like to see them do more crazy stuff. But we are well on the way. I am happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. This this was out of the park. Yeah. Like, this, a new take. Do they they, they rolled the dice with this one and knocked it out of the fucking park. Yeah. Like, I wish I had gotten uh, a copy of the meme for right now. But there was a great meme I saw. It was uh, the beginning of the new Suicide Squad, where Amanda yeah. Waller's walking Bloodsport around. Except instead of Bloodsport, <laughs> it's uh, Loki, uh, Thanos, and uh, Ultron. She's walking <laughs> them around, and then she walks up to Peacemaker, except Peacemaker is now uh, Michael Douglas Ant-Man. And it's just saying, he does what you guys do, but better. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, he, he fucking murdered yeah. Like, you can go up there and be like, I will fight you and defeat you like all those other guys do. But, you know, Ant-Man just comes through and sneaks through and kills him quite... I don't know if I want to say easily, but he does it quite efficiently, at least. Kind of... Yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, when he kind of... At the end, where he kind of told... Or he pulled the curtain back and told us how he did it all. Yeah. Yeah, I think the most interesting was definitely Hawkeye. Or, Th- or Thor, rather. Yeah. Well, Thor, Thor was very much just like, oh, I, I imagine he was probably targeting Hawkeye at that moment. And it was just like, oh, well, this guy's going to be an issue, too. So, mm. yeah, well, might as well get rid of Muscle Beach, too. Yeah. And I'll just take care of him. Yeah, I do love that. They referred to him as Muscle Beach the entire time. Yeah. And I, it's, I also kind of like how it's like the big 
hero mo well i guess it wasn't a hero moment even the original movie because he doesn't pick up the hammer but you know it's, no. he's approaching the big hero moment and well nope he's dead <laughs> yeah oh my god is he gonna get the hammer yeah you don't know you don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're we're just gonna leave you there <laughs> yeah this is awesome because they definitely took a chance with this one. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I I knocked it out of the park, and yeah, from that first one when when Iron Man fell over dead, I was just wait, what? And I don't recall, but I rec it's not Rob Downey Jr. But I recall the voice being totally decent. No, I remember almost thinking it was Downey. I mean, it was a good enough impersonator. Yeah. Just how they got for the uh, first episode of that one that sounded enough like Cap. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it was Chris oh, Evans, but it sounded see. enough like him. <laughs> no, no, no. See, I remember you do That's everything of course, yourself. Jackson. How's it working out for you? Oh, yeah. I've been worse. You become a problem. Yeah, it's that's pretty fucking good. I'm so. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really digging the animation style. Yeah, it's, too. I'm, it's I've, really growing on me. Obviously, it would be cool to bring them in for live action, but this is obviously easier. And it also gives oh, yeah. them a lot more freedom because they can jump around in time quite easily with this uh, yeah. method. No problem. And, mm. I mean, I guess this is just, like, the nostalgia in me. I mean, I would really like it if it was, like, um, that same side of animation style from Batman the Animated Series. Ooh. Yeah. I just think, like, when they were doing comic book, ca like, cartoons to that model and everything. Because, mm. <clears throat> well, I mean, Marvel kind of did their own thing with mm. it. But they still fit that same, like, a similar frame to how both of them looked. Like, I'm comparing uh, Spider-Man and Batman, which both of those series were on around the same time. This is, I mean, this series would easily have to be probably the best marvel produced animation in 10 years that being said that's kind of a low bar if you've seen some of their animated movies uh some they of their animated very hit movies and miss mm. and shows yeah they're they, they're hit or miss or i feel that they're too targeted to kids mm -hmm. now maybe because comic books originally were designed to sell to children yeah yes there is a middle ground to go for though uh, there definitely is middle ground for that. Now, I feel when it comes to animate, animation in the comic world, uh, DC has been paving the way Fuck yeah. for the longest time. And they're, like, undisputed. Mm -hmm. Marvel, they're a little bit behind the eight mm -hmm. ball, but they're still on point. Like, they did, they did a couple of Ultimate Avengers, like, 15 movies, Ultimate Avengers movies, like, 15 years ago put my thought yeah. all together those ones kind of sucked there was an ant-man yeah. and iron man animated movie they did that was borderline unwatchable with how bad the, the animation Hulk is and wolverine movie was unwatchable yeah uh that was really bad but there was also a doctor strange movie uh it's not great but like the first half is actually pretty fucking good um well so it's it's, it's kind of like the killing joke how the first half is all right yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, looking at the other end, it, when you look at, like, DC animation, like, DC animation versus Marvel animation is literally the inverse of their live-action stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Marvel's got the live-action stuff down, DC's got the animation stuff down. Yeah. Neither one's perfect, but, man. No. <laughs> I, they I got would, it down. I would argue probably the only animation that probably surpasses dc would probably be coming out of like disney or pixar yeah uh, as far as american animation now of course like the best animation is going to be anime but we can only well, get yeah. so far <laughs> yeah we can only dive so far into that rabbit hole mm -hmm. but yeah but all that being said what if is actually a great step forward in their animation department that was pretty much my main point it's it looks really good it's not the best I've ever seen, but it's pretty fucking good. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I have any final thoughts other than I thought this was really good. Do you have any final thoughts, Bobby? Yes. I'm going to interrupt you uh, while you're drinking. <laughs> oh, hell, Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
No, this was this was great. They didn't do the swapping one character for another, mm-hmm. which I was kind of worried that it might do. Um, I'm noticing a very similar trend with these Marvel series. I've noticed that the first two episodes of each of these have kind of had very similar feels and tone, as in like the first two will almost kind of mirror each other. Yeah. In a way, sort of. And then they really start diving into the real good stuff after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, WandaVision, Winter Soldier, and uh, Cap and uh, Loki all did the same thing. Yeah. This one's doing the same thing, and I it it's just repeating the formula, which it it ain't broken. Yeah. So I'm ready to see what else they have. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this week. I'm not and sure I think what, what is tomorrow. I. I want to say it's something about Doctor Strange. Because mm. I saw something from Marvel, and it was Doctor St- Stephen Strange, and it and it was Benedict Cumberbatch nice. as nice. Doctor Strange. So I was like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will. And I think it might start diving into the multiverse. Is there a multiverse? A little... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I feel like this whole series is just that stealth. Uh, I feel it is. It, I feel it's. I feel it is like kind of diving into it and mm-hmm. showing all these different timelines. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we introduced a multiverse. Yeah, we'll show you a couple. We're not gonna spend serious time with it, but you know, here's a couple of tastes. <laughs> We're gonna have some fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Great step in the right direction. Uh, absolutely. But we got some more comic book uh, TV. To talk about today too yes we do doom patrol oh yeah season one uh we'll probably talk about season two next time but season three yeah. comes out the end of september so i i got caught up with season one and i hate to say it i like it it's not as good as i remember um i was kind of shocked how much i didn't remember i remembered the broader points uh, I remember the characters because I love the characters. I love the performances. They're all kind of insane, but in their own way. And I, all the lead actors are fantastic in this. I just I want to stress that. And oh I, yeah, I love Alan Tudyk as the the omnipresent narrator slash villain. I love his performance in this. I'm yeah, Alan Tudyk knocks it out of the park and almost. Anytime he's on screen, he's just always amazing. I, but a, as the villain, I, I really loved him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he's 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 just great. <laughs> I was about to say he's great as a villain, but he's great as a hero too. He's just fucking great. It's Alan Tudyk. You could not go wrong yeah. if you cast Alan Tudyk somewhere in a show. Um, what my issue was rewatching it is I felt it got super redundant because it, I feel like we kept on hitting these same points with these characters. Cliff is detached from his daughter, and he's in a robot man suit, and he can't feel. Um, Larry misses his gay lover. Rita yeah. is blobby sometimes. Cyborg has issues with his father. And I, I feel like rewatching it, I really felt like they're hitting these things over and over again, and it's a bit much. Um, okay, yeah. I actually feel like this series would have been better at maybe, like, 10 episodes because it was actually 15 i was shocked how long it was Uh, yeah this i remember this season being rather long yeah and (laughs) like it's weird saying 15 is over long because like 10 years ago like what season was it like like 23 episodes yeah Yeah, or something like that yeah i'm watching deep space Nine with my daughter those are like 26 episode seasons this used to be really long but of course this used to be you know 15 would be short that being said uh, a lot of that stuff wasn't hyper serialized too. This is hyper serialized. Every story yeah. leads into the next. They really it's overall a great show, but I feel like especially how it does the ending was an issue for me. Cause it feels like uh Mr. Nobody is suddenly a good guy and he's going to narrate the ending for them so that they all survive. And they do. <laughs> And we end up with kind of a cliffhanger, uh, which we'll discuss more in season two. But at the end of this season, everybody shrunk but Larry. Yep. (laughs) Because they all got eaten by a giant cockroach. (laughs) 
Yeah, and and uh, no, it wasn't that they went into a wormhole that was from a farting donkey. Well, that was a. Uh... That wasn't the end of the season. That was the beginning of the season. That's right. That was the beginning. <laughs> yeah, no, this series does weird shit. Like, it, it, it yeah, starts they, they out with really the farting do. donkey, where it, that, that there's literally this donkey that swallows up a whole town up its butt, essentially. And they have yeah. to go into the donkey and get get it out. The donkey does explode in episode two, at the I want to say at the end, where it explodes and everything gets recreated. It's like, fuck. <laughs> And that's kind of an element I kind of love about this series. It actually reminds me a lot of Legion, except where Legion treat it like he's going insane, at least for the first season, and then the second season, it just did whatever. <laughs> this just does whatever, but it just kind of owns it. It's just kind of like, yeah, shit's fucking crazy. Deal with it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I did like just the unpredictable nature of this series and show like it's 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 chaos i love i love yes it. yes that is like i said for me i feel like it goes over long and i feel like they need to think out that ending really a lot more because i guess there's room for him to come back i haven't finished season two there's room for alan Tudor to come back um i would like to see that uh and why, like, he does all this planning, and I guess the cockroach and the rat, rat just go too insane for him, and he can't control them, so he joins oh, the good you mean guys. The, you mean the cockroach that's voiced by Curtis Armstrong? Is that whose voice it was? God, that was so yeah, familiar. Yeah, that's Booger. That's Booger from mm. Revenge of the Nerds. Jesus. <laughs> oh. I heard that, and I was like, I was like hey, that's Booger. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is an insane show. It's worth the watch. But like I said, the season one, I, I well, guess I liked it more in the first watch. So maybe watch it once I, and don't watch it again. <laughs> I think that with every season one of any show, so much of season one is like, a, you know, world building, mm -hmm. character building, plot building. Yeah. So much of all that, that they have to dedicate like as much of their time to it. And it ha it. It has to get redundant, so that yeah. way it's like ingrained and in common knowledge, like for that world. But yeah, I I do agree. A lot of it did become like the the character tropes. Like we get it. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't hyper serialized, what? I'd yeah. I'd agree with you. But when <laughs> when it is hyper serialized and it's getting redundant like that, it's a bit much. Like we get it. Cliff is literally a broken man. Yeah literally it's, a broken man. it's not subtle he's telling us this in lots of four letter words every episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i kind of also love how like brendan fraser just curses like a sailor in this oh yeah uh <laughs> let's see i want to dig up the cast real fast because i won't mind giving them a shout out because they're all fucking amazing yeah, absolutely like especially brendan, brendan yeah brendan <laughs> well robot man is kind of presented as like the anchor for a lot of it. Yeah. He is the character we are mainly following. Uh, James Earl Jones. <laughs> uh, just saying where random words on my phone are always nice for a podcast. <laughs> yes, they are. Oh, yeah. April Bowlby, uh, Elastigirl. She's really good. Um, Diane Guerrero. I'm slaughtering that, but Crazy Jane. She has to play a whole bunch of characters here, and she's great. Uh, she is really good. Yeah. Uh, Matt she... Boomer, uh, Larry Trainer. he's excellent. He's actually, of all From, the characters, uh, he is the most, like, quiet and reserved. And he does that really well. Oh, he, he's very good at that role. Yeah. Like, he, it's a very, like, that quiet and reserved is very similar to the role that I think was his first television break, which was the show Suits. Or he I played, like, a suits, con artist. But... He, he, it wasn't Suits. It was some show where he played a con artist where his buddy was a fed and he would help his the fed catch crooks who were also crooks. Mm. Or, I don't know. I remember him on some show like that. That's where I remember mm. that actor from originally. And uh, it was oh, on the. Oh, Brendan Fraser is in this? I oh, yeah. Huh? No, he is. He is probably the standout here because. And he, most of this is just his voice. You don't see his actual acting. You do see it 
maybe some flashback a half shots, to yeah. a, not half, maybe like a third to a quarter of the time you see his actual body in the episode. Love is just his voice, but he does a great job. And then uh, Timothy Dalton as the chief. It's Timothy Dalton. Yeah, it's Timothy fucking Dalton. <laughs> and then, uh, gonna slaughter this name, Hovon Wade as Cyborg. Kind of interesting to even put Cyborg in there, but he kind of works. He's considered, like, the I... one actual superhero here. <laughs> yeah, and I also kind of like this kid's acting who's playing him. Yeah. Better than DC like universe like the guy who's appeared uh, in right, justice sure. yeah i kind of definitely believe see more of Patrol them more. i i see i really I like ray fisher too um I, it's tough to judge because we don't see that much like we see a lot of this yeah. kid as cyborg so i we definitely do. lean and, in that position um yeah and that's that's probably why i feel that way about it too mm -hmm. because we see more of him but I've, I, I don't know, I guess, I, after, the, after watching uh, the Snyder Cut, mm -hmm. we do see a bit more of a cyborg in that. Yeah, we, we definitely get a lot more cyborg in that, actually. And, and if it wasn't so rough to sit I through the Snyder see. Cut. <laughs> and I still feel the same way that he had a better grasp of who the character was. But again, that's, that's my opinion. Yeah. Well, this movie, the, this movie, the Doom Patrol also For explores sure. a lot of the... Uh, well, I guess all the variations do, but this really explores uh, his relationship with his father in a much darker way. I guess... Yeah. Zack Snyder really... We're going off on a Zack Snyder tangent. But it's okay, his fan base is totally reasonable. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but it's still DC. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I re... So, I guess the end point was I rewatched it. It's good. It's not as good as I remember. It's redundant. Probably need to be 8 to 10 episode season instead of 15. Mm. Okay. Do you have any final thoughts? Um, I'm still pumped for season 3. Yeah. I yeah. still oh, love yeah. the unpredictable nature of the show. Yes. Um, I do kind of feel it like getting a little drawn out at times. Rewatching. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I uh, I had kind of restarted it a while ago, mm -hmm. but like I was maybe up to episode three, or I had just started three, so it was enough to where I know where we're at. Yeah, I could just start back. Well, there's kind of a decent a little bit where it's like I remember this decently well. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't <laughs> remember it being as redundant. But yeah, rewatching it, that's when it really starts saying it's like, oof, I know this I already, kinda, guys. I know. I also this is me, and I didn't really care for how much of that end plot followed the girl. Like the daughter, his daughter. Now, uh, what are you talking about, season two? Yes, I am. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just started season two, so uh, that, that, like I was trying to think. We'll get into that. One? Yeah, we we'll can get, get, into, in, we'll get into that later. Um, I'm like halfway through it, so. I know what you mean for season two. Season one, you had me lost. I'm like, daughter? No. <laughs> yeah, my bad. I, like I said, I kind of might have fallen asleep in between at the end of one and woke okay. up in during. <laughs> All right. Man, uh, it was laundry day, man. <laughs> oh, I need to do laundry. Uh, but yeah, there's Doom Patrol. Uh, yes. So yeah, I think we've covered everything we were going to cover this week. Yes, uh, we have. I think... I think that's a decent length episode. I think Sleepaway Camp is the uh, winner of the segment. <laughs> it is the segment winner because that one went into us just talking about a cheesy 80s movie to current issues. <laughs> yes. Well, that's what happens when cheesy 80s movies think they're being clever and really just get super cringe. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking more about like... Um, you know, separating the art from the artist today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's always just an interesting thought. And I always, I think about it, you know, like I could watch Rosemary's Baby and not think about Roman Polanski being yeah. just a fucking piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Or I can listen to some old 60s and 50s doo-wop and not think, of, think about Phil Spector killing people. Yeah, there's, that's an interesting thing to talk about because there's, like, I still listen to Michael Jackson, even though he probably did some really seedy stuff with kids. He did he, some of that shit. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then, uh, and, and then at the same time, I have trouble watching anything of Kevin Spacey anymore. And I, I don't haven't... know why I'm okay listening to Michael Jackson, but Kevin Spacey, even though it seems like they probably did about the same thing. <laughs> you know what? Um, I was going to say I haven't had any trouble with it, and I rewatched Seven. No trouble there. Maybe it's easier because he's just the dark. He's already a piece of shit in that one. <laughs> so we watched another one of his, and this one was a little bit rougher. Really? Which one? American Beauty. Ooh. I didn't even think about that one. There's a mm. whole subplot there. No, no. Phew, yeah. Yeah. I mean, still visually fucking beautiful, mm. but... Uh, yeah. And he, he is a huge, like, like Seven, he just pops up at the end. He is a huge part of American Beauty. Without Kevin Spacey, there is no American Beauty movie. Yeah. And I hate, like, he was one of my all-time favorite actors. And as far as raw yep. acting, it's tough to get better than him. But, oh, what a piece of shit. <laughs> no, like, I think one of his greatest performances, like, and just showing raw intensity and power is probably in Pay It Forward. Oh, I haven't seen that he's, since it came out. <laughs> he's having like a like a serious scene, mm-hmm. like heavy dialogue, heavy with Ellen, with a uh, Helen Hunt, and he just shows some fucking level of intensity that's just powerful. Like it stuck with me still to this day. But I don't know if I could watch it now. Yeah, because, I know. Well, that's the thing. He's an like, amazing I've actor. Been really wanting- I've been really wanting just to rewatch House of Cards because I love the character of Frank Underwood. I I can't like. I was really slow on that last season getting it finished up. Well, not, uh, I guess next to last season. It was the last season with him in it. I was in the middle of watching when all this stuff broke about him. Yeah, and I couldn't finish it. It's like... I stopped know, watching just because, like, oh, fucking Kev, fuck you, yeah, Kevin Spacey. I, it's tough for me to, look, like, I, I mean, like, Baby Driver came out not that long ago, and I can't watch. I have trouble watching mm-hmm. that one again. Watching. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're on a whole different topic. But... Yeah, we are. But uh, <laughs> maybe maybe next week we'll we'll see what we feel like next week. Yeah. <laughs> that any any final thought? Anything you want to plug real quick? Ah, uh, uh, Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Bobby Quarters on Facebook. Um, Bobby Quarters on YouTube will be launching with the uh, True Crime season one. I'm gonna be getting. Uh, I have a scheduled shoot for my uh, Friday the third, or not my Friday the thirteenth, but my Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm going to get that done. I'm going to hopefully get that all chopped together and in the can here soon. I got the script, so that's the most important part. <laughs> nice. No. But th- that'll be fun. A little mockumentary. I'll let uh, I'll uh, let you know when it's up, Bob, and I'll definitely let mm-hmm. the uh, our viewers know when it's up as well. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I got uh, my DCEU ranking is uh, in post right now, so that should be out, uh, if not this Friday, the Friday after. Everything always takes longer than I anticipate. Um, yeah. I am probably really wanting to write up something on Sleepaway Camp and uh, <laughs> maybe even involve Science of the Lambs as two different, but in many ways, problematic in the same way, movies. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm really thinking about writing something like that. So that might be coming. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Ideas are running, especially after sleepway camps. Uh, the podcast, I, I'm really finding the podcast is kind of inspiring stuff, too. So it's kind of awesome. Yeah. And I'm also learning about my mic more, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I honestly would have had this uh, Friday the 13th, or, God, second time I've done it, Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street, one done, if weather has cooperated with me. Mm-hmm. Weather has been the biggest delay in all of this. Oh, yes. Mm. Every day that I have free to shoot and I have someone to help me shoot it, we're dealing with rain all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> rain is the bitch when that's... The... And the hard thing is, whenever you're trying to do this, even if it's for a project for a school or even just your own freelance work, it is hard to get permission to film inside of a school. Mm. It is hard. It. Mm. I did it for the broadcasting school I was in. We mm-hmm. had to make a news segment, and I did one about teachers 
teaching remotely and doing all that and I and students but so I had to get or from this from like a parent's perspective so getting their kids in, enrolled in online school and doing all that I wanted to get some shots of an empty halls you know an empty school so I went to my old high school talked to the vice principal for a while told him everything I wanted to film where I wanted to shoot exactly what I wanted to and he's like okay okay well, I have no problem with you filming. You just can't film inside the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, a lot of B-roll of the front of the school. Ugh. So, like, like even, like, I assume it's when the school's not open, right? Yeah, there, it was after the hours of okay. where any kids would be there. The only kids that were or could have been there were in extracurricular after-school activities. Wow. All in designated areas. Yeah, so you yeah. could keep away from you. Like, I wouldn't think that'd be a big deal. Mm. No, and really, I wanted just one shot of a hallway mm -hmm. and lockers. Yeah. Maybe even just one of me holding my camera, walking past them like this. You know? Mm -hmm. just, just getting the shot. I'm I'm almost yeah. tempted to say that that you know if you have issues with that that's when you you know when you're walking out of the building you just kind of flip out your phone. Boop, 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 boop. Nothing. No, I'm texting. Oh, I'm well, the, problem is, the, problem, the problem is how my high school is. The front entrance. Mm -hmm. Offices. Ah oh, shit. Front yeah. entrance. Offices. Yeah. And on this side, dean of students. Uh, <laughs> Those were always the doors that were unlocked. And the other ones are in the or the commons. So it's like double doors and then just big open cafe. <laughs> so no. I did try my old way of sneaking out of school when I was there. Mm -hmm. That door is now really secured and locked. I believe the yeah. other one was welded. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get creative. Well, we have projects coming out. Uh, yes. Next week, next week we have Shang-Chi. I was also yes. thinking we'd probably talk about Iron Man 3 since it relates to Shang-Chi with the Mandarin. Okay, I will rewatch that and give a hot take cut on that. Yeah, and then uh, there's also that Marvel one-shot, which is like only a couple minutes long, the All Hail the King. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. I've seen I've I've seen it at like ads for it when I turn on my Disney Plus, but I have not watched it yet. I wouldn't think there'd be ads for it. Um, like on the banner. Or I've seen it either scrolling. Uh -huh. I've, I, it sounds familiar. It, 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 it stars Ben Marvel. Kingsley. Uh, it came out with the... I don't think it was the Iron Man 3 DVD. I think it was the one after that. It might have been Thor Dark World. If you're having issues, I can I can hook you up. I have <laughs> seen it. I okay. have seen it. It is... It's 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 streamable on my Yeah, Disney it might also Plus. be on YouTube. Oh, it might be on okay. Disney Plus. I didn't think about that, yeah. Uh, uh, that's yeah. where I saw it. That's where I saw it. But yeah, yeah, those are definitely things. Do you have an idea for uh, appreciating great trash? Uh, um, you ever seen uh, have you ever seen a movie called Trick or Treat made in the 80s? I've heard of it. I've not seen it. This film is advertised, or at least the DVD box that I have, has Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne. Holy on. shit, are you serious? But they both make cameos. Oh. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, I, I was just as disappointed. Just as disappointed. But uh, Gene's in it more. Ozzy plays a televangelist Baptist preacher. Okay. And it's essentially the evil rock and roll. I am on board if you want to do that next week. Cool. Um, cool. Awesome. Yeah. This one isn't as problematic, I promise. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you... I solemnly swear. Okay. <laughs> it's it's not problematic. It, it it's it's just just good eighties bad horror. <laughs> well, we we will see everybody next week. I want to go ahead and add some audio credits at the end here. Uh, the theme music you're hearing at the beginning and end of this podcast was uh, written and performed by George Johnson, a very good friend of mine. And my current Patreons are uh, Fel Martins, David Lara, and Lindsay Painkhurst. If you'd like to become a patron, go ahead and follow the link down below. Anything you can provide would be incredibly helpful to this channel. 
we're barely limping by right now. Uh, I'd love to make this my full-time job, but I'm miles away from that right now. So any help you could provide, just a dollar a month would be amazing. You know you want to. All your friends are doing it.